Mike's mic'd up with Mikey Matuk. Got the boys in. I got Lloyd. We got Jay Mitch. We got Jackie Boy. He tried to jump up, but he might have knocked it in. Good time. Let's go. What a start to the Monday. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, I'm from Lafayette, my boys will come in and say, oh, 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 God. So I'm, me and Joe on the ground, I got Joe in the headlock. And he's sitting there, <laughs> he's punching me in the stomach, like, punching me, punching me, punching me. Up here, is everyone sitting around, who here thinks Ochenko can practice today after having five full beers? And he goes, Chad Jones, right? Chad Jones, <laughs> <laughs> six minutes. For seven minutes, right? Chad's like, no, oh, man, I, I don't think I was going to practice today. And I was like, I look back, I'm like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I saw you there. You were more fucked up than me. Being on the spirit plane had some issues, I think. She was sleep, sleep farting. You heard her or you just thought it was her? I, was, I sat right next to her. I Whoa. What was that? Time for the show. Now, when you do go to spring training, are you going to bring your chinchilla and your turtle? <laughs> My dad tell you about it. <laughs> <laughs> the SEC is, God, they hate fat people. <laughs> I mean, I get crushed for that. You know what I mean? It's like, come on, man. Hey, you know, like, just the South, bro, you got a bunch of food down here. Like, they, they just come on, just, they're they're just, they're just, <laughs> Look at Lloyd. <laughs> you know what, Lloyd? <laughs> if you're looking for a recruiting coordinator, coach, I'm here. <laughs> He's like, I'll piss my pants right now. No way. No way. You're wearing gray pants, long gray pants. He goes, I'll piss my pants right now. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to Mic'd Up. Today is Monday. I mean, Wednesday. Wednesday. March feels like it's Monday. Uh, March 13th. Listen, we got some things happening. We're not there yet. I'm looking at me on the screen. I don't love it. Love it. I like it better than I did on Monday. And we told y'all it's going to be a work in progress. But we are in a studio that is ours. We're very excited about it. We're very happy about our new partnership with the boys at Indigo. And we'll talk about them as we continue to go through this show. But we are here Wednesday. Uh, we apologize this week. We're not having guests. Obviously, we are 
moving houses. <laughs> so we are, you know, going to make sure that we're good to host our guests. We will have a lot of guests next week. Already got them we scheduled. Still got the movers in here. Ready? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we got the covers on the carpets and stuff. Like we're doing some things. We're making some moves. We're very excited about it. Um, LSU baseball started the first of two game series against San North Dakota State. I always say San Diego. Why? North Dakota State last night. They win the game six to one. They are currently playing game two of a two game midweek series against North Dakota State right now. They are currently up five nothing in the top of the sixth inning. Pitching has been the, the conversation early on in the year. Gave up one run yesterday, zero runs today. Uh, we're lights out over the weekend. And so I think they're in a good position moving into the weekend, uh, SEC weekend against Mississippi State. Uh, we will give you updates as the game's going on. We're gonna be kind of watching it as we go. Um, but like I said, this is a new studio. So we got a lot of things that we're trying to make happen before uh, we really start getting back into our you know, normal fold of things. Um, NFL free agency right now is booming. Happy booming. New Year. Happy New Year. I mean, you got a lot of people going a lot of different ways of note. A lot of LSU guys are on the move. Uh, Patrick Queen signs with the Steelers, moves from the Ravens to the Steelers. I don't think you could have picked two better teams that fit his style of football and his mentality on the football field. Signs a three-year, $41 million deal um, with the Steelers. That's a huge move for them. Daniel Hunter has been one of the top sack guys in the NFL for, I don't know, the last five years. He's been in Minnesota. He has signed a two-year deal, two-year $49 million deal with the Texans. He's going back home. He is originally from Texas, so good to see him. A lot of running backs moving around. You know, you're going to see a lot of new uh, same faces in new places. Uh, Derek Henry, you've only seen him in, in uh, Nashville playing for the Titans, no longer playing for the Titans, going to the Ravens. Seemed like that was kind of a slam duck, slam dunk uh, decision. Uh, Saquon to Philly. New York Giants fans aren't very happy. Tiki Barber, not happy with him. Tiki Barber, you're dead to me. Good luck, but you're dead to me. Don't talk to me. Apparently, a lot of the other NFL guys started making fun of that and doing it to their teammates for them teammate after their teammates have left. Um, Jameis is gone, and that kind of upsets me a little bit. I didn't think we are going to sign him back. I think we all knew he was gone, but he is now in Cleveland. Yeah. And you know what that means? Cleveland's already going to – they're going to get a locker room guy. They're going to end up winning the Super Bowl first year there, and Jameis probably deserves it, and I'm okay with it. You know what I mean? Like it's – you know, Jameis has earned it. He's deserved it. You know, he's never really got that true opportunity to be the starter again, which is okay. You know, I think you don't know if he is the starter, but um, he's always going to have a job because of his locker room presence and the things that he brings to the team. And the last of note, before we move on to men's college basketball and women's basketball, is CJ GJ. If you don't know who that is, CJ GJ used to play for the Saints, obviously. Then it was the Phillies, or Philly it was in Philly with the Eagles, not the Phillies. I don't think he could play for the Phillies. Um, and or the 76ers. Loved, yeah, or the 76ers. <laughs> loved playing for the Eagles at the time. Was running his mouth about how much better it is there than when he was at New Orleans, right? That was the whole thing. Then he leaves. He gets traded from the Eagles to Detroit and comes out to the Detroit media and says the Phillies, the worst thing about Philly were the fans. Okay, so he obviously is very loyal to where he's at. He's a not <laughs> Isn't loyal to who he came from, right? Like he'll trash whoever he came from. Well, he was a free agent, signs a three-year deal with the Eagles. Same town he hates. He is backtracking quickly. Hey, I um, didn't mean that, blah, 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 this stuff. So he's back. Interesting to see how they're gonna accept him back. Right. He makes a couple big plays. I imagine they're going to love him, and uh, we'll see what happens. But he is there, and that should be an interesting storyline going into next year. Uh, men's basketball starts the SEC tournament on Thursday, tomorrow at noon. They play Mississippi State. Mississippi State um, was one of the teams that I went to watch LSU play here, and I mushed them again. So I went to two home games this year. Both home games, LSU lost by 20. Lost to Mississippi State second one, which is the one that I really thought they were going to win because they are hot. That's after they came off the two ranked wins. Solid show, everybody. Yeah, not great. And then before <laughs> that, was it against, was at home against Alabama when it was a tight game up until about five minutes and Alabama went, you know, berserk and ended up beating them by 20. So I will not be in Nashville, so you don't have to worry about that. 
Uh, but they play at noon tomorrow, a little midday matinee. Yes. You know, get you this gets you ready for March Madness. That is not like the tournaments because tournaments are played at every part of the day. And so you're starting to feel like, oh, it's starting to be kind of March Madness season, which is great. And I have no idea. I have no idea, uh, which I think is going to be better for me because I'm going to have a, my best bracket ever because I have no idea. And that I think I'm not going to overthink, so I'm going to do that. Are you going to fill out a bracket, Lloyd? You don't. You're not going to. I'm not a bracket Because you're lazy. No, it's not that. It's just, what's the point? It's fun. It gives you something. It gives you a reason. The same reason you bet. It gives that's you a reason what, to watch the games. That's the second part of it is I just gamble. And I, I usually stay away from March Madness because I do have one rule. Oh, you do you have a rule. You have a rule. Usually I like to, I'll gamble on anything, but I can't, if I can't name a player on the team or a player on either of the teams, no, so that's I usually not your rule. You read away. that rule somewhere. No, that's mine. Nope, you read that rule somewhere. I've no. heard that before. It's from me. You heard it be, I've said this before on the show. Because yeah, the guitar looks good back there. Yeah. I might You got it. one. We're going to have more. We're working on it. Jared's got two. Jared's got two. Look at that. Jared's got, look, we, look we're making some adjustments. You, if you just saw, seen this room on Monday. They did. No, no, no. No, they saw what we showed them. No, if, they, if you true. Have seen this room yesterday. If you just seen this room, if you just seen this room, it's from 30 seconds ago, 30 mm. minutes ago. Well, maybe three minutes. hours ago, because when y'all got here, you know, it was y'all. I got overwhelmed <clears throat> yesterday. Mental health day. With no, no, it's sun not. wasn't out. It was <laughs> not mental health day. It was actually a good day of work, long day of work. Had a lot of things going on. Was not was not able to make it my day job, not work. This is work too. This is fun. And so I didn't get to come back. I appreciate you boys helping me. Lloyd, I appreciate you coming do the things that you said you were going to do. That's great. That's great producing. Today, I was able to come a little earlier, and I was able to set some stuff up. So we're making some moves. Lloyd cussed you out the entire time. You didn't show up yesterday. I'm just letting you know. So. Man, that if he did that, <laughs> I'm very disappointed in you because... No, I got my fit out on Monday. <laughs> okay. I'm not mad at either of you two for a long time. I hope not. Um, all like right. What spot's taken? Let's talk about the game yesterday. You watched the game yesterday? I did. So they did what we didn't think they were going to do. They flipped the rotation. They did. They threw Kate Anderson yesterday. They did. Um, I will go back and look at his actual numbers. I don't think he threw. He didn't throw a ton of pitches. I think the number was around 30. I think he threw 33 pitches. So that tells me. He will be, you will see him this weekend. He could be ramping up for a weekend. Yep. Spot. Not even a starter, but like you will see him throw <clears throat> this weekend. They pitched him on, on uh, limited pitching count uh, last night. Right. So that they, in my opinion, so that they would have him this weekend. They did not report any injury. They did not report anything that is. Um, hey, I think. Alarming. Uh, yeah, I think. So with that being said, it's. Almost seems pretty clear to me that Jay's putting a huge emphasis not only on this weekend, but the beginning of their schedule in the in conference because it is a pretty tough road, and I think he wants to get as many of those W's as he can because the more that he can get, the better it sets them up through the the rest of that that uh, schedule. Yep. So if he threw him and he only threw thirty three pitches, he wants to be able to have him as available as possible no and as sharp as possible over the weekend. And I would imagine he's either going to pitch Saturday or Sunday, maybe Sunday, maybe hold him for that Sunday spot. I don't know what the lineup really looks like for Mississippi State. I'll dig into that um, over the course of the next couple of days. So on Friday, when we give you the, f the full preview of the weekend, we're going to have a little bit uh, more of an idea. LSU, uh, Bingham hit a home run. Two-run home, two home run. LSU up 7 nothing as we speak. Bottom of the sixth inning. Uh, the wind was howling today. The weather is coming. Looks good, actually, for uh, this weekend. Like, cleared up. Listen, St. Patty's Day. The parade is going to be going strong. I will be riding in the parade. And so I am worried about the rain because I would like to not be rained on. And I've been checking it. Checking today, I checked it. It had the sun shining next to it. Mm. You know, that's a great sign. Mm. Now, that doesn't mean much other than the fact that it gives me positive hope. That I'm not seeing rain, the chance of rain going down. It's not going up. It's going down, which is a good sign. Um, also, a good sign is, uh, so tomorrow, Alex Box Stadium, really probably tonight, Alex Box Stadium is about to have a, you know what we should have done? We messed up. Already? Yeah, we should have invited... A Savannah Banana on the show. Well, there's a, did the they LSU tomorrow. player make it? Josh? 
Or, no, Watson? I do not think so. Maybe he's on party animals. I don't know. Is he not playing baseball anymore? I would, say, I would imagine he has to be in spring training right now. I mean, he 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 put his, a thing out that he was uh, that he was uh, he was like trying out. Yeah, for the Savannah Bananas. Yeah, but the party animals are part of the Savannah Bananas show. <clears throat> this is the team that they play. Yeah, it's like the uh, Harlem Globetrotters. Yeah, it's the Harlem Globetrotters for sure. And the other team, I don't even know what the other team's name is. The party animals for the Harlem Globetrotters. The party animals. Are they called the party animals? Oh, I was like, <laughs> wait, you can't copy that. Um. But anyway, they are coming. The, the Savannah Bananas are coming here for a three-game series. The Generals at Washington Alex Box Stadium against the Generals. On no, the, on, again, not against the Generals. Against the Party Animals. Uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. But I think the rain is supposed to happen on Friday, uh, so they may move that game to Sunday. We will see. But this weekend is going to be booming. It's going to be fun. I could not get tickets. I was very disappointed in that. Uh, they're a very hot commodity. Houston was a banger, apparently. They said they they packed out Minute Maid. Yeah, they did. How crazy is that? Oh, I've heard from other people that were trying to get tickets through me, like I was going to be able to help anybody. And then we talked to Chris Blair, and he's like, I can, they won't even let me in the booth. No, so it's fully Do- controlled it's a travel by show. the bananas, right? Yeah. And their quote is, actually, I'll tell you their quote. I got a text today about it because I was trying, <laughs> you know. So their quote is, uh, there's no workaround in regards to Savannah Banana seating this weekend. The one ticket price, open admission to all, is part of the mission of Savannah Bananas. True showmans. Wow. Really monopolizing this thing. So... Huh? Can't get in there. Ain't finagling LSU. You have no connections with LSU. I think they offered, if you owned a suite, they offered you something that you had to pay for, obviously. Uh, but, so I will be watching, I will not be watching this Phantom Bananas, but it'll be fun. I know a lot of people that are going, I have some cousins that won the lottery, won some of the lottery <laughs> tickets that they have, like a group group lottery. So I'm going to go put up a ladder at U High and just kind of sit at the top. Just go, of the go you know, sneak into <laughs> Tiger Stadium and watch from the top. That'd be sick. But they sold out Minimate. Back up a truck. They sold out. I don't think oh, high school, don't high school style. Uh, they sold out Minimate for three days. I mean, they are printing money. Yeah. That guy did a really good job. That guy apparently was a minor league baseball player, right? I think that's the story. And then he tried to take over a, a summer ball team, failing summer ball team, pivoted from a summer ball team to this, and now he is selling out major league baseball stadiums. What an awesome thing! It's unbelievable. And look. I think it's great for the gap. I think it's like it's just like the Harlem Globetrotters, right? You you won't take any of those things to college or professional sports, but it kind of gives a whole different element. I think the out the fans catching a ball and it being an out is awesome. <laughs> I think that makes it really fun because yeah, it's pretty interactive. Fun. But um, once I know the whole like all of the rules, I'm gonna go look them up. I'm gonna we're gonna have a we're gonna have like a poll or we're gonna have a question like what do we think what rule would be most fun to move over to actual real baseball. You know what I mean? Like I know the rule. It's not right. realistic, you know, but like what would be fun? The best one is the the with the inning where if the fan catches the ball and in, in foul territory it's an out. That's what, that's what I just said. Yeah, yeah. That's the that's the one that I think anybody that goes to the game like Steve Bartman could have been a hero. Hero. <laughs> Instead, Moises Alou yeah. is still mad. Mm. <laughs> but is Moises going to catch it really? Oh, yeah, it was going in his glove. See, you're a big Hubs fan, so I was I watched it live. I watched it live too. You were young. I was invested. You were young. And they had a shortstop. Gonzalez boot the ball. Just kind of got out what of hand that? after oh, that. Four? Oh, four? Oh, three. Because oh, three. I could have had an LSU National Championship and a Chicago Cubs How old were you? appearance. Ten? Yeah, it's fifth grade. I don't know what that means. I don't know what age that is either. You know how old you were at the time, though. Do the math. You're 10 or 11. Oh, okay. So 92 to 2003, <clears throat> 8, 9, 11? 11. When's your birthday? The 5th of March. So you were 10, about to be 11. Yeah. Because we got to wear jerseys to school after go. the national championship. There you go. Fifth grade. Or fourth yeah. grade. Fourth grade. Whatever it is. I don't know. I was in Title One, dude. Uh, but, yeah, that'd be great. He'd be he'd be a hero. All the people that get kicked out of the game. Well, then you'd have to worry, you'd have to move the stands back. So you have to worry about all the fans trying to reach over and make, make plays, help the team out. 
be a hero. Yeah. Yeah. The home or team fan, or home, bat him away. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Fan, and the fans would be yeah, locked man. in. There would be no more sections. I'd be trying to lock in with anywhere I can with another fan. Like, you can't. Nah, hey, you're not about to beat us. Hey, glo- everybody's got gloves. Everybody's coming to ball. All the, the gloves, glove? all the glove, all the glove sales, Marucci, all these, they're all going to go out because all these they, fans are going to be hey, starting buying honest, these gloves. They're not even going to start coming with gloves. They're going to start coming with big old fishing nets. And just <laughs> well, you got to have reg- you gotta have regulation. We've seen what the NCAA did. You know what I mean? you got to have some parameters <laughs> give it to an keep this take thing a in the box. You can't, yeah, you, can't, you can't give them full reign in this situation, but I think that'd be fun. It'll never happen, but I think that'd be very fun. Just it's, bring it's, the big jumbo nice, glove. It's a good, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a good, good hypothetical. <laughs> it's a great hypothetical. Um, but they're playing this weekend. You're gonna have a lot to do. You have LSU on the road on TV. You can watch them play. I guess it's not really on TV, but SEC Network Plus. I don't know if it's uh, it's televised live. Um, if you really want to find it, you can. No, you can find it. We have guys. We, we have, have guys. Boys. We have boys. Um, Lloyd, you are mm-hmm. doing something this weekend. I am big. We're going to have to find a uh, pinch hitter for you. We might have to find a pinch no, hitter are, for Monday. Right? Yeah, I mean, it seems like it. It's, not, it's out of my control. That's fine. Where are y'all going? Dallas. Oh, a little wow. golf you match with the uncle. Flying or driving? Driving. Okay. Big fly Me and the pops. Nice. Brothers gonna make flying it there? in from Chicago. Where are you going to make it there without fighting? Oh, yeah, we should be good. Now, the way back might be a little different depending on how it goes on the course. Mm. Playing at Dallas National. Are you ready? Dallas National, wow. Yeah, that's the one. So it's out of my control. Yeah, I'm sure. You had to pull some strings. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Couldn't, um, couldn't do it anymore. Yeah. How, like, uh, how are you playing? We've all been practicing. Everybody in the family. Dad signed up for lessons that's, with that's golf wild. tech. I've been able to get in touch with Lloyd. Mm. Yeah, it's been on the golf course. Mm. My brother's playing on the simulator in Chicago because you can't really too play cold. golf. Too cold. He found one course he got to play on. Gets ma- matched up with a random. And he, he ends scratch. up being this chef so they both are talking like food oh. and he travels across like all around chicago playing these private courses with the group and they needed a fourth and sean might be in that number wow he played, he played well he's like hey come with us we need wow. one more guy there we go and good for like, your brother ah, people helping people good for your brother so uh well good for you we'll figure you. it out we'll, you'll, we'll just you know screw us but it's okay hey we'll when you get the out. opportunity to go somewhere figure it out they're doing 30 million dollar renovations to the course after this so we got to go we gotta go before they ruin it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, Take good luck. Out. Thank you. Good luck. Um, did y'all watch the game last night? Yes. That was my qu- initial question. Uh, uh, parts of it, yeah. What did you like? What didn't you like? Let's talk about it. Well, you you spoke on Kate Anderson earlier, which I feel like should have led the show, and I'm glad that we did because first of all, North, North Dakota State came out swinging it. Of course. Like, you've seen kind of what the strategy has been with Kate Anderson, like from every start except for. His previous one, where he had what thirteen strikeouts and was absolutely dealing. It's been see yeah. how quickly you can get out of an inning because they don't want to burn him up until obviously now for SEC play. But they came out swinging and kind of had kind of have his number a little bit. So it's the first time you've seen him get hit around. But the way that LSU was able to once again pitch around it with the amount of depth that they had, I felt like Justin Lower came in and had an awesome appearance because Fidel gets into a a stretch where he has I think two outs. Ends up getting, gives up a single, walks a guy, hits the guy. Lower comes in. LSU's only up three to one, and Lower comes in, gets a huge strikeout on the three-two count. Where you saw why yeah. you bring him in and why you yeah. got him out the portal. So I thought that was big for him after he kind of struggled in his previous appearance. Well, it's, and I think people are going to realize as the season goes on how important he is, right? Because Jay has a lot of confidence in him. He's got a lot of veteran. He's got a lot of experience, and Jay has no problem putting him in. Tough situations, right? Like last, like yesterday, and he's more times than not so far has, has thrown really well and has gotten out of it. So, I think he's an interesting guy to watch. I don't think he's going to be, a, but maybe, maybe if uh, they keep Kay Anderson for like long relief for the weekends or don't throw him all the way through midweek, or maybe you have two midweek games like uh, that other star role. I think that Jay would rather keep him out of the bullpen. Yeah. Um, Jay, did you watch it? In yeah. The game? What? Yeah, but like, for me, I, I know I've, I've like touched on him a good bit. Uh, so I won't really talk about the depth of the bullpen, right. but the versatility of it is what's showing up again to me. Like We're basically seeing somebody like Javon Coleman, who's ended up throwing three innings at the back of the game and got the save, but he's coming into a situation where seemingly he's going to be doing a lot of long relief, 
So you're gonna get a lot of Ackenhausen. You're gonna get a lot of Javon Coleman. You got you got guys that you look good are too. going to stretch you out and just find mm. different. Here we go and just find different ways of finding. I just, I just knew it. <laughs> and just find different ways of putting it. And and I, the reason I'm stressing that is because one for his side, for Jay's side, to be able to get these guys to understand that you're you can be called on at any time for any role is pretty cool because that line of communication being able to do that is is different you're not you don't find a lot of coaches that will give that kind of communication or can kind of have that kind of communication with players but for the other side as they get into the season you can't plan for what they're going to do and who they're going to throw because you don't know right we're like we're not really knowing who you're going to get and when you're going to get them at this point so i think that watching that and how that's going to kind of keep unfolding on the season is pretty cool right i i agree i agree i think that i'm trying to get this box score from yesterday um, I do it kind of a weird way now. Um, Ronnie Rance is calling the game with our boy Lynn Rollins, right? And Ronnie made a point on to say on the on the uh, broadcast today, I believe, is when I heard it, um, that North Dakota State has played a brutal schedule. I think they play like nineteen home games all year. Yeah. And obviously, game, yeah. yeah, obviously they're in at North, they're playing they're from North Dakota State, so they can't get on the field. Run. It's too cold. Yeah. They have a limited amount of time of when they can actually get outside, and so they have filled their early part of their schedule with really, really, really tough teams. Right? Like they've played. I think they've played Long Beach. I think they've played LSU. Obviously, I know they play LSU. They're playing right now. Southeastern. They've played UC Irvine, there you go. Oregon State, Southeastern, who, as we saw, isn't a South bad baseball good. team. And now LSU, and then they're going to get into their, their schedule. Like yeah, there. so like they're playing some tough teams. And uh, the point of them doing that from their coach is saying, hey, we know we all, they're in the summit, I, I believe, is their conference. And so they are not – it's a one-bid league. Right. So the summit's only going to get one bid, which is going to be – the champion no matter of, how good your record right is. yeah no matter how good unless there's someone that's just you know killing it but that's their deal right one bid league and so their whole thing was they wanted to strengthen and get themselves ready for that league for, so that they're that team that, that gets the bid and so i think they're doing a really good job obviously you know they're excited they're outside you know that's what that was coach Monero always said hey don't take these guys for granted they hadn't been inside all they haven't been outside all winter they're gonna come here and they're gonna be swinging they're gonna jump, stick it up your ass so he's gonna say, and I was like, well, geez, coach, like relax. And usually they're right. They come out hacking, like North Dakota State is. Like they are swinging. They're not worried about striking out because hey, they're not supposed to win anything. They're not supposed to score. They're not supposed to win any games. We're gonna go out there. We're just gonna make sure that we're ready and, and get our swings in. And they're doing that. You know, I think LSU's pitching staff obviously is very good. So they're gonna um, kind of they've kept them at bay so far. But last night, Jared Jones homer again. Yeah. Two walks. I think backside that's again. also important. backside again, right? Yeah, yep. yeah, and he pimped the shit out of it. He did. He he's feeling good. He's feeling himself right now. The two walks. So he went one for one with two walks, which I think is a you no know, one for two with two walks. I think that's a great sign, right? Tommy White went one for three um, with a walk, no strikeouts. Tommy and his hit was a opposite field uh, hard ground ball where the second baseman was rolled over. Right yeah. now, I bring that up. Because a lot of people will say, well, they're always making, they're always shifting him. Why doesn't he just always hit it right there? Well, a couple reasons. One, it's not that easy. Two, would you rather Tommy White just keep getting singles and not try to drive the ball over the fence or in the gap, right? Obviously, I understand if the pitch calls for it, it's away, or it's a pitch that he can't really drive and he does that, that's great. But that's not his, his game isn't to look to do that. If it's, you gotta, you gotta think too, like, for Tommy White, who he is and what he did last year, right? If he were to have a year this year where he hit, I don't know, 320 and, I don't know, let's say eight homers and a ton of singles, <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, for every opposing team that's pitching, that's a win. It's a win. <laughs> if no if this guy's not driving the ball and driving the ball out of the park, that's what they want. No so doubt. I get it, you know, yeah, we want him to just hit the ball the other way, hit it where they're not, yeah, that's cool, but... That's not that's a win for the other team right. if you're getting that guy to do that. Right, 100%, right? And so I think what we saw, now, if he gets a couple of those hits and he gets them going, that's great, yeah. right? But that's not something he's going to yeah. look into. He's going to look try look to try to do unless yeah. they're giving it to him. Um, 
But look, I have no worries about him. That's that's the other thing is people are nervous that he only has two home runs. He's not really you know super hot. You have to remember he did not have a fall. He barely had a spring. Yeah. Right. And so he's still trying to get comfortable with himself at the plate. And you have to understand he is getting pitched very very difficult. Right. Like they are pit. They are spinning it on him. They're dotting up on him. When you're in the situation where you know you're the guy and someone's pitching you really tough, you look up and you feel like you're always 0-2, right? I imagine he's feeling that same way. I don't feel like he's pressing. I look at him and I see that he, you know, he got a hit yesterday. He's smiling on first base. I think he knows he's coming. I think he's starting to feel better. I think that swing last night shows it. And uh, I don't know what he is today. Do we know? Let's yes, see. I can pull it up real quick. He so, is one for four. One for four. Okay, with a double, right? And he's hitting, okay, he's hitting 314. Right. Okay, so it's not like he's hitting 214. Tough year. He's hitting 314, and he's probably got just under a 500 on base percentage, maybe, you know, 450. I've had a guess he's probably at north of 400. Anyway. Yeah, and so my point is he is just fine. Um, Jared Jones also, what a day he's had. One for one, a double, two walks. So he is starting to understand the strike zone, huh? starting to make those adjustments that everybody wanted him to make. And uh, credit to him for, uh, for doing that. I think the real conversation, if you want to talk about people focusing on players struggling, it's been the Paxton Kling conversation yep. that continues to yep. struggle again yesterday. And I, I think he is, he's 0 for 2 today. So that's starting to build a lot of momentum. And even if that is the case, I still think he's he's a guy that you – continue to play and say figure it out, right? I don't think he's in, in no danger doubt. of Listen, losing he's his hitting, spot. He's hitting 226, right? Not great. Um, he's been getting on base. His last few days, he hasn't. He got on base today with a walk. Um, he, he struck got, out a few times yesterday, struck out once today. He doesn't have enough at bats where you say, all right, you're done. Right? Oh, you're struggling. You can't get out of it. Like, he goes and he, ha- he figures it out and he feels better. Like, he has an opportunity to have a week – four or five games where you look up and he's back hitting 330. It happens like that this early in the season, right? He probably has 60 at-bats, maybe, maybe. And uh, I'm not worried about him. I, I do want to see him start playing well. Um, and I don't think it's there's much there. And, like, I obviously I got to look at his swings and see. I'm not going to ever put somebody up here and critique. That's not my job, Right. Our job is not to say, oh, he needs to do this better or that better. This would make him better. I'm not his hitting coach. Jay's very, very, very good at what he does. And so I have confidence that Jay would see it. Now, for my own benefit, to be able to look at it, I would love to see kind of what's going on, see if I can pinpoint something. But yeah. I'm not worried about it. I really do. I think he's going to get out of it. What do you think, Jay? I think so, too, man. Like, it's it's super early. Um, and I think he's one of those guys that he, he does get a little streaky. Because you remember last year, he went through a streak where he was, I mean, just unbelievably hot at one point, right? So he does get streaky. I do think it's good for his confidence. I think he's one of those guys that the confidence level gets super high and when he's doing better. So I would like to see him kind of get going for his own sake, right? But I think he's going to be fine. I really do. I think it's somebody, somebody that they've tabbed as we can, on a, we can only really go as much as you go. Right, like the team is going to be as best as it can possibly be if he's in the lineup. Um, so I just think it's you know it's a little bit of time. He doesn't have enough at bats yet. Give it some time. I think he's going to get going. I agree, Lloyd. What do you see that as why he isn't getting going? Well, that's going? that's what I kind of really have to dive into. Um, you know, what I I mean I haven't seen enough of it, but from the few swings that I have seen, it doesn't feel like. He is trusting in his ability to, like, get inside of a pitch. It almost looks like he's, like, trying to press to go get it, right? Not necessarily lunging, right. but, like, not – he's kind of getting away from, hey, staying through the middle of the field, and he's just trying – feels like he's feeling for the hit right now, which is normal. And like I said, I technically I, I can't look at – I haven't seen his swing enough to be able to break it down. Like, I'm not just going to throw out some generic terms like some people may try to do. And say this is why he's not doing well. Like I, I would never do that. As a hitter, though, and someone who's super talented, I would imagine he's probably pressing. He's trying to get hits. 
Yeah. And he's trying to put yeah. like force. I don't. I, we don't know him super well. We, yeah. We've gotten a chance to meet him. We've got a chance to talk to him. Um, he just seems like one of those guys that when the problems come, because the problems come for everybody, it seems like he's one of those guys that does more pressing than it is actual fundamental. Right. And it's when do you stop pressing and just start playing, as opposed to oh let me fix this fundamental. Just seems like one of those. Yeah, I mean, I don't think, like I said, I don't think it's too much. I really don't. What? I, what do you think about why they continue to have him bat? Whenever he goes in with an OO count, he goes up there, and it's a, it seems like he has to do the take till you get one almost, but like the fake bunt where he bunts and he has no intention of bunting. I don't. But he does that a lot. He's done it the last so, two years. So, so you're almost listen, putting him in a hole a little bit. I don't know. I have any this when I when I'm saying what I think is why he's doing this <laughs> has nothing I have not heard from anybody not from coach yeah not from him not from any players this is just for me being a fan and being somebody who has been in a situation where I'm trying to see the baseball sometimes when you square a bunt and you kind of get behind it it locks you in visually yeah like you see the ball you're behind it you kind of track it in a little bit and maybe that's him trying to like, all right, even though I'm taking it, I want to make sure that I can like just track it just to see. Oh. And maybe, right? And that happened. I've done that. Like there's been times where I have been called on to really bunt in pro ball. And I hate bunting, but called on to we bunt. Know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't love it. And uh, I didn't want to get, I had to get it down. So like really lock in to like get behind it and force myself to keep my vision on the baseball. And my next few at-bats, I felt better. I feel like I saw the ball better. So I got to understand it. I don't know if that is why. That is literally that's also me super, just assuming. Yeah, that's also a super unorthodox thing in a sense of I highly, highly, highly doubt right. that Jay's continually giving him fake bunts. Right. Yeah. So I think it's something he's probably doing on his own. Right. Or has maybe he's gotten one. Maybe they've talked about it before. And now he feels like, oh, I could keep doing this. And, the, and, the, and Jay's allow like when I say allowing, like he's not telling him, hey, don't do it anymore. So I I think that's probably something he's doing more on his own than it is a a, a signal he's being given. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It looks unorthodox. It's not the greatest thing. It's not what you really want. But yeah, yeah, because that, that makes more sense to me than because I was trying to I was searching for a reason as to why because it felt like every time he was up that it never felt like he was really a threat to get one down. I know he's fast, but it's not what you want him doing at the top of the lineup. But if that's what it is, that makes more sense than just going up there. Hey, give him the right. give him the take to you get one and square around. But if it's him, like, all right, I'm taking this pitch regardless. But it just feels like it handcuffs him a little bit whenever you do have a guy that is as talented as he is and you kind of give up on the first pitch because if he grooves you a fastball and you're already squaring to bunt, there's something you can do with it. Right. No, because I, that could be just one swing where you're like, okay. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's it's a tough – if he's feeling that bad to do that, to find it. He's been it, doing like, it since it. last year. I know. I don't know why. So it's a, it's an it's an interesting question. It's a great great question posed by you. I don't understand it. Next time we have Jay on here, it might be an off air. Yeah. But hey, do you mind if you ask that question? Don't ask that question. Don't, yeah. Okay. We're we've talked gonna, about. Yeah, 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 we talked to. We're it. not going to. Yeah. It. So let's talk about that. Fake you know part. who? <laughs> you know who's swinging the swinging a very hot bat? If I can find his coach uh, coming up your national championship, just a couple critiques as to how you coach the team. <laughs> <laughs> Something I noticed from my couch. Yeah, look, yeah, I, don't, Lloyd, look I mean, this is what I think. You should, actually, you probably should say that. He, didn't, he, probably, he could probably enjoy that from you. I think no, actually, don't hurt, say that. Yeah, it would hurt my credibility a little don't bit. Say that. Don't <laughs> say that. What the little I button. have. You might get the mute button after that. Yeah, you do it. yeah don't, don't say that. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm trying to find. Cam Johnson is currently in the game. Cam Johnson. So, Brady Neal. Do you know what his numbers are so far this year? He's 0 for 2 today with two walks. Coming into the game. So I have his numbers now. I don't know if that's oh, this counting. Is, this is like right now. Live? Live. Hitting three hole. Mm -hmm. He's hitting 348 on the year. I think three or four homers. Um, does a lot of doubles. Feels like he's putting some together some really good swings. I think that's a good surprise. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I think those guys are like he's somebody that like played early, had some moments, didn't play a long time because he got hurt. And he came back, how is he going to fit in? What's he going to do? Well, seems like he's fitting in, you know, pretty nicely. Yeah. Right? Um, and look, these guys that are playing well, 
Travinsky, 328. I think all of us can agree Travinsky hasn't even scratched feeling locked in right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? And he's still able to get a couple hits here and there, hitting 328 on the year. You know, you have jo you have Jared Jones hitting 300. He's starting to kind of bring it back up. Brady Neal, White, Bingham's hitting 300. So it's not as, uh, let's say, as – the well, offense yeah. isn't, isn't as, as explosive yeah, yeah, yeah. as people probably would want right now. Going into the SEC play, you have some guys in this lineup that are still putting up decent numbers, and they are going to continue to get better and feel better as the season goes. Speaking of decent numbers, around the SEC, which we're going to start bringing that back, we or start that, doing that this year. Have you all seen what Charlie Condon at Georgia is doing? He can't stop hitting home runs. He's hitting 548 right now. 12 home runs in 17 games. Now, if they played last night, that may, they may have changed it. 12 home runs in 17 games, hitting 548. It's pretty good. That's, that's a strong start. That could carry. <laughs> he carry that's after he, that's after he, as he was a retro freshman last right. year. Uh, he, hit 20, he hit 25 home runs last year. 12 home runs in, in 17, 17 games. games. That's he ridiculous. 25 last year? He 25 last year. He's draft eligible. Oh, he's gone. See you. He's on, he's no on his way to 35 this year. No doubt. He's, I mean, he's going to hit the 30 like I thought Tony White was going to hit. Y'all called it. I'm not saying it's over. It's obviously not over, but 30 is going to be hard to hit. 30 is going to get hard to get to. Yeah. 20. He can get to 20. He can get to 20. Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, there's a couple people in the chat that have already written him off, which is my favorite thing about baseball. Oh, it is, Mike. It is Wednesday. So ask Mikey and Mitch Day if you want to throw some in there. We'll uh, answer them. Uh, yeah, I'll just I'll bring a couple up. Um, I don't know. Did something happen to Bear Jones? Somebody else is asking in the chat. I missed some of the game earlier. Did something happen to Bear? I'm not watching it. He got up a little limpy after a double sighting into second. So our guy Fonz is on the case. I mean, he's still in the game, I think. As, is he he's still in? Nobody else is playing. Oh, nope, he's out the game. You got to get him right for the weekend. Hopefully. Hopefully it's nothing too serious. I mean, it's 7 nothing in the 8th, so yeah. I don't know when they took him out. I, I, I wasn't able to see that. We're doing some moving. Yeah. As we, as we talked about. Um, questions? I'm trying to pull him up so we could use him one. Tell you what, I cannot wait to get a new chair. You know, like that spot? Boy, you know, this like is, the bar stool? I hate bar stools. I hate bar stools, too. Because I, like, my back starts to hurt so bad. Bar stools cook my hamstrings, bro. I, I just, hate I it. Hate you just it. have to stand up. I am. Stand up, kneel up, move around. This is what I initially wanted to do with the show, but then I realized standing up the whole show is a lot. You don't yeah. like stand up for two hours straight? It's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. I start off standing up, move around. I like that. Now this is better. I can, you know, work on some swings. You know, we can You'd be a little more animated up there. I would, Actually, I would, we shouldn't do that because that that entire thing. Yeah, I'll knock this down. It's not good. Avatar. For you. It's, <laughs> it's not, not good, good for, for you. I'm very I'm a very athletic person, but also somewhat clumsy. <laughs> yeah, we broke we broke a, a HDMI cable within the first 15 seconds. So. I also broke the glass from my jersey. Yep. But, so this is one of the Christian Burris. This is in relation to Tommy White. He's overrated. Mom is a better hitter. Better glove and just has less power. Okay, Overrated, so, huh? Well, that's a, that's, that's a, large. Yeah. That's, that's a large statement right there. That's an there. aggressive statement right there. After his two-year track year in college baseball, that's an aggressive statement. I, I, I don't know if I would go with overrated. I don't know if I would go. Actually, I know. If you if you like Milam better, go ahead. Have all means. That's your opinion. So Milam's a great – I mean, he's a great player. He's going to be a great player, right? Like, Yeah, I'm just not – I'm trying to find Milam's numbers, but it's hitting like three fifty something. I think I want. I think, I believe, maybe close to three sixty. Going into this game, I don't know what he's doing in this game. I don't like the stats on this thing. Can't find it. Can't find it. He's not playing this day though. That's why I can't find it. Who Milam? Yeah. Yeah. Got the day. Got the day off. Got the day off. Got, I mean, he's been playing every day. He's he's one of those guys in the lineup. He's really three sixty eight on the season. There you go. Thank you. Three doubles, no homers. Yeah. 13 RBIs. How many strikeouts, how many walks? Um, Probably not many of you. Nine strikeouts. Where's the uh, – nine walks. Yeah. So he's doing – He's doing well. Really he's good playing, numbers. He's playing well. I just now, I'm <laughs> – saying that Tommy White's overrated, that's just um, – that's being in the moment. <laughs> you know, that's, that's a prisoner of the moment. Tommy's got the same amount of strikeouts, same amount of – I'm sorry. Same ratio. One yeah. for one. It's 13 one for and one. 13. Um, he's got and put in a totally different position. Than I'm sorry. Was, was Tommy's on base percentage? 
I'm sorry, Tommy does not have. He's seven and seven. His on base percentage is four thirty nine, which is higher than guess who? Stephen Motto. Right. Actually, eighteen points higher than him. So that is <clears throat> there. You go. The conversation. What is the object of hitting? To get on base, nice. right? Now you want guys to drive guys in. That's thing. But if you're getting on base, you limit the slumps and you limit the down the the valleys of the season. And Tommy is getting on base at a 438 clip, hitting 314. It's not like he is hitting 214. He's hitting 314. He is going to continue to get better and better. He's not even, he is probably 35% of himself, not even, I'm not talking about physically, but just of like what he's capable of doing at the plate. I think Mr. Burris is just trying to get us riled up. No, I think so too. I think, I think he wanted a reaction. I think so too. So I, I, I understand it. I'm glad that you were like, you, you love it and we want this thing, everyone to be perfect, but nobody's a machine. Nobody's perfect. Yeah. You know, I would have do what I have liked to him get what what I've liked to see Tommy get off to a five forty average with twelve home runs in seventeen games, of course. Yeah. But it doesn't always happen that way. You look up at the end of the year, he's gonna be right where he needs to be. I really believe that. You got any more? Yeah, Christian Burris doubles down. He isn't even that hot, just way better at bats to get off Tommy's nuts. He's he isn't even that hot. What do you mean? Well, nobody I said guess. he was hot. <laughs> Mylon. He's well, talking about uh, he's in here. Let's have this conversation. We, ne- we never said Mylon was hot. What is uh, what are better at bats? So wait, 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 wait. So tell me, tell me, tell me. I'm asking. So wait, 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 wait. So if Mylon's not hot and Tommy's obviously not hot, then why is Tommy still on base at a higher clip right. than Mylon? But we're right. saying he's not good. Right? right. That doesn't really make much sense either. In every sense of the word of hitting, in production at the plate, outside of average, which is the most probably the most overrated stat right now on base percentage is probably more valuable than that right of every like all of as being a productive hitter tommy <laughs> would be more productive even right now <laughs> and i, I don't listen i, I would, would like to ask this question too if he wasn't playing well i'll tell you i'd like wasn't. to ask this question too to christian just to, just as a thought when we talk about college baseball who has more of a book out on him on how to pitch him tommy tommy white or steven Milan? They don't know Steven yet. They don't know Steven yet. Nope. And he doesn't step, and respectfully, he, does, he doesn't step in the box at 6'3", 225, where you're like, hey, we probably shouldn't throw this one over the plate. Mm. Listen, I think Milam is awesome. We're not, I think, we're not discounting right. Milam I think what he's all. doing is great and much needed. Yeah. And I think he's going to continue to get better as the season goes on and as his career gets on. SEC starts, this is where the next level comes, right? I told the story before. Jacoby Jones, his freshman year, my junior year, Jacoby Jones goes into SEC play hitting over 400. And, like, now you talk about somebody 6'3", like, Jacoby was 6'3", 195, 200 pounds as a freshman, super athletic. He's a guy like, okay, if we throw this ball over the plate, we feel like this guy's going to hit to the moon, right? So that was one thing. He's going in hitting over 400 as a freshman in the SEC. By the sixth week of the SEC, he's hitting – 240, right? Because the SEC is different. They made adjustments. They started pitching. They realized, oh, this is what's going on. This is what's working. We're going to continue to do that until he makes a turn, which is phenomenal. And so my point in saying this is there's, there's ups and downs to the season, and I'm glad that Stephen Milam is. I hope that he continues to do this throughout the course of the year. When you look up at the end of the year, I will put a lot of money on it that – Tommy White's going to have better numbers. I'll, I'll better. also say this, too, if you want to think about last year's team. If I'm scouting last year's team and I'm thinking about going into a weekend against the, uh, uh, to play against them, you sit there first and you say, well, who can beat us if we make mistakes over and over and over again? The answer to that would be Dylan Cruz. The answer to that would be Trey Morgan. The answer to that would be Gavin Duga because he's led the SEC in homers at one point. right? The answer to that would be Tommy White after what he did his freshman year. Now, realistically, if I'm asking that same question going into this year, who's the one person you're saying? There's only one person on that list. Right now. Right now. There's only one person on that list right now. So with that one person being on the list, why on earth would I be throwing him cookie, just here it is, hit it, and instead of making everyone else, hey, you figure out how you're going to beat me because I'm not going to let this one do it. As of now, he is the only guy. Right now. Maybe they're a little scared of Jared. Maybe maybe Jared, too, because of size, because of what he did to start the year. But I would even say because of how the year ended, there was a book. And people are like, well, if we do this, we could probably get him out. Right. As of now, 
Tommy's he is the, guy. the guy that they're yeah. they're most worried about. Now, as the season mm-hmm. progresses, hopefully that changes. Right. Trubisky maybe too. Right. Trubisky too. Yeah. He probably got maybe two, two guys. Maybe two. Yeah. And so. That's just I, and the I reality still, and of I it. still think there's probably more people saying when it comes to Draven, uh, to Travinsky is do it again. We haven't seen it over a full year, do so again. do it again. Yeah. Right, right. Did he come back in there? Or did he leave? No, he's out now. He's like, oh, uh, 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 maybe not. He says something that probably probably shouldn't put on there. No, he just just <laughs> talking to someone in the comments. Please calm down. <laughs> like the tuck of my tail. <laughs> uh, you, I mean, the comments part of the show. Yeah, yeah. The comments are on the show. I thought it was but... a question to us. Yeah, it was. I mean, it's, uh, it's all Do we have thought. another question? Not from oh. them, from anyone else. Yes, I think that it's phrased. I know what we're trying to do. Just that he's limited in characters, but Fonz has a great point where talk about how the team is constructed currently. And I noticed this a little bit in yesterday's game where they actually Can made you read me- this. Yeah, ask him, why do people not understand this team will not be a, a gorilla ball team and the whole team, pitching and positional players, will change for every game? Jay has way too much talent not to use in that fashion. And that's we've been there talking. you go. We've been that's saying that very well while. said, right? Like, it's teams are not all going to be created equal. Not everybody is going to just bang 150 homers. Not everybody is going to drive in the most runs in the, league, in the, in the country. And that's not the way it works all the time. Like, if it did... It'd be way easier to win national championships. Yeah, that's also coaching, too, in the sense of coaching to the team that you have. There you go. Instead of just saying, hey, man, if we don't have Gorilla Ball, I don't think we can win this year. Right. That's coaching, understanding who you got in, who you were able to bring in, and how you're going to have to coach this team, mold this team, and play this team to be able to put out wins every every day. And they're doing a very good job of it right now. But we all knew that. Like, we, we knew coming into the year, especially early on, there is going to be a lot of figuring out on the offensive side. And it has nothing to do with talent. It has everything to do with experience and how many guys don't have the amount of at-bats that the guys last year. What did we say before the year started? If they averaged six runs a game, I think we'd be very happy. Mm-hmm. Right? Six runs. Like, last year, I think they averaged, like, eight, nine runs a game. If they averaged six runs a game... With the pitching that we have, I'd be pretty confident in getting wins majority of the days. I really would, right? And that's some days you're going to have a 2-1 to one game, some days you're going to have a 12-1 to one game, right? But on average, if you're averaging between 6 and 7 runs a game, those should, with the pitching staff you have, you should be able to win majority of the games. Now, I don't know that as far as what the, what the other stats are around the country, but the stat that you have and the ability for you not to give up runs is a huge plus. And that's how the team is going to be structured right now. Like, that's just the way it is. Offensively, they're going to figure out a way to score. Yeah. It's not going to look the same way it looked last year. Yeah. Look, and you saw that yesterday in the, in, in the game where they had the old high school play, which I haven't seen in a minute or seen work in a minute, where they had the man on first and third. You go to steal second. They throw all the way through. The guy on third goes on the throw, and he ends up taking – and they manufacture. Oh, you're talking about the throw down. Like, we yeah, took down the second base. So that's, a, that's a great play. That's not what we call out high school. That's a play. Yeah, just have it, I feel like it's, it isn't used as often probably in college baseball as you see, or you certainly see it played differently. Did he get cut off? I didn't see the play. No, he threw it all, like threw it through, and threw then, it home. yeah, no, he scored. Oh, so LSU did it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm right. saying. They manufactured right. a run whenever they had, I believe it was Malazzo. That's great base running. Malazzo won first. Yeah, I, don't, I forgot who was at third, but, and he just gets himself in, essentially into a pickle, and they score a run. LSU is able to manufacture okay, so wait, first lay this and third. Out, I didn't get to watch that, that play. So lay this out to me. Malazzo stole. Catcher threw down. Did the guy from third take off instantly, or did he wait till they got in a rundown? I believe he was pretty much like halfway, then got into a rundown. He okay, so he scored. scored on the rundown, Okay, yeah. that, which is also a play, right? Which is, hey, you're going to go, you're going to get in a rundown, and you're going to read it, and you're going to try to score. They were trying to manufacture a run, which they did. Right? Sometimes they say, hey, I want you to read the throw. If it goes all the way down, the minute he throws it, you take off. Right? And that's where you see sometimes a – the second baseman, the shortstop, whoever's not covering, come and coming in and cutting it off and yeah. trying to throw the ball, which is also t- mm-hmm. tough. You know, if you're in the you know a pro ball, that's probably a, a normal play. But like in college, like that's something that you don't necessarily practice all the time. Like you got to go, you got to catch it. The catcher got to make it's a, throw. Well, it's a whole lot of it's a whole lot of trust in that shortstop exactly. or the second baseman because you're asking them to make the move and make the read on the run, catch and throw. Yeah, because if he throw. goes and cuts it off and the guy yeah. doesn't go, now you got second and third. Yeah, right. And so that's part of why you do it. You put pressure on the defense to make the right decision. And that's sometimes that's what you got to do. Kentucky won a bunch of games, and we're not going to beat Kentucky. We're not going to bunt all the time. We're not going to do Kentucky all won all those games, too, without the level of pitching that this right. That team has. Right. And so my point is, like, there's other ways to win. Yeah, and Jay, is, Jay made a comment after the 
I believe it was after the UL game, whenever they play a similar style of baseball to that where they're trying to run all the time, they're trying to just squeeze as much, I guess put as much pressure and manufacture runs in any way that they can because they don't have a lot of home run power. But Jay was like, I, I've coached like that before. Whenever I had a different team. He knows. He knows. So there's multiple ways to skin a cat, and I think that you're seeing that with whether it be the lineup that he puts out or just how the flow of the game is going. He still feels like he's still confident enough that – LSU can beat you in a multitude of ways, especially when they're pitching it the way that they are. For sure. No doubt. And that's, I mean, that's what you want from a head coach. And that's what you want from a team. You've got to, like, adjust to the level, to the styles of play. Like, if there's only one style of play, live and die by the home run. You're going to be pretty. You saw that. You see that in professional baseball in the postseason. Teams that live and die by the home run, man, they got cold for a series. They didn't win it. Well, you got to figure out other ways to win. You know what I mean? That's just. That's just the name of it. Well, it's a little, it's like you can even take it to like Alabama basketball. Whenever they shoot a million threes a game and then they go cold one dig, one game in the tournament, your season's over. Yep. Because you don't have a there's nothing to pivot toward. LSU has, and I think it's contingent on the pitching staff because if you're so confident that you're not going to give up a lot of big big innings or games where you give up a ton of runs. Yep. I think it's kind of like, all right, by the fourth or fifth inning, you're going to understand, all right, we might only have to get two more across. Right. And 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 we're talking as if the Zellerhoof offense is bad, which it's not, because I think what they do better than probably any team that I've seen them play, at least, is the amount of pressure they put on you every single right. inning. They always have people in baseball that's getting hit by a pitch, drawing a walk, getting a hit. All of that is there's always somebody on base, and it's just – I mean, baseball is a simple game when you get down to it. It's hitting with runners in scoring position with two outs or less. And when LSU does that, they're really hard to beat. On a side note, we can go back to baseball in just a second. <laughs> you think the NCAA is happy? You think Pat Forty's happy right now? A little ways back in the tournament? Oh, no. <laughs> he just Where's that 40-yard dash? Just won the South, they just won the Southland Conference. Oh, he won it? Mm-hmm. They beat Nichols by uh, a lot. They beat him by... Uh, Nichols was hot, too, going in. 16, 92-76. Three coached. losses on the year, that's it. Three losses. They and went from not being good to tournament team. I think they won three games last year. Yeah. Now yeah, they've won 27. We'll call that a turnaround. 28, I think. After 28 now. So, yeah. shout out to them. Congratulations. <clears throat> Still um, got that future on them. Watch yeah. out. To make these wow. <laughs> you're buying, hey, you're buying the new furniture. No, 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 I'm about to tell you what. If that happens, Lloyd may not show up after. Yeah. If that happens, you're buying, you're buying the new. Uh, Actually, I will because he, you know him. He only put a dollar on it, anyways. I think I put three. So what are the odds? I could pull them up, but I mean, it's gargantuan. Um. Anyway, back to baseball. We have another question. Oh, Great question about the fonts. Yes, absolutely. Uh, let's see if we have anything. But continue. Oh, okay. Here we go. Bayou Bingle, who's had some great points in the chat as well, asking Manum, how good do you all think the pitching staff is compared to the rest of the SEC that we have seen so far? I know we haven't seen a ton of top to bottom, I, one to two. I think it's top, I think there's, I think there's some sure. other top end guys who could, you know, possibly you could say is probably just a one off better pitcher than some guys like the Hagen Smith guy from uh, Arkansas. I don't even know. What, I don't. I don't know what Caglione's doing at all on the mound this year, but. I, there's some other guys that come in into mind when yeah. it comes to being like just a straight up, but top to bottom, it's got to be one or two. As far as like um, depth and talent and the ability to throw guys in and out, like um, I'm not like I don't I haven't seen enough of them. I'm gonna say top three for sure, right? Like they very well maybe one, they very well maybe two, but top three I think as far as depth <laughs> and talent. And bringing guys, having guys being able to dominate a game, um, I would say top three for sure. Now, I haven't seen all of the pitching staffs, so, you know, that can change. But uh, as far as what I've seen from LSU, as far as what I've seen from it's LSU, it's going to be hard for me to believe that there's anybody else. Yeah, but say so you see what you've seen from LSU, and it's hard for me to sit here and think that there's three to four to five other teams in the league with a. With, with that amount of I mean, depth. here Because they just don't stay in college baseball that way. And, uh, Out of the last 10 starts, LSU has given up. There's been one start where you've given up multiple runs, earned runs. And that was Thatcher's start two starts ago. How many? I don't remember the exact number. It wasn't many. 
think it was three. It wasn't many. Yeah. Yeah, this was the eight games, right? This is before the last two, right? So here's the eight. So the last eight games before these last two, which I'm going to add to it, you have had 41 and two-thirds innings pitched and 71 strikeouts, nine walks, and you've given up two earned runs, eight runs total. Eight games. That's eight divided by eight is what? A running game. One run. Okay. So then you play yesterday, you gave up one run. You play today, and you have given up zero runs. And that wasn't one of your, it wasn't Luke Coleman, Kate Anderson, Gage Jumper, Thatcher heard that. Win. Did Kate didn't give up a run? That wasn't Kate who gave up the run. No, it was night. yesterday. I'm talking yeah, about yesterday. Yeah, he gave up one in the first, and that was it. One run. And so now you have 10 games started, or the last 10 games started. You have given up nine runs, which is less than one run a game. Yeah. And you are scoring five to six to seven, eight runs. I think the most you score in that stretch is eight runs, which fine. If you're not going to give up runs, you don't have to score a lot of runs. Right? And so um, – I believe that you have the talent on the mound and the depth on the mound to be able to continue this to keep going, right? You just, I mean, the weekend guys have not shown you anything to, of concern, and your midweek guys have done exactly what they needed to do. So, yes, top three. Thanks, Bayou Bingle. Yep. And Vaughn sends in another one. He said, sarcasm and implied. <laughs> Since Tommy sucks, do you think he will start his plate appearance with the two strike stance to try and get back in rhythm? So, obviously, he doesn't. Minus suck. the first part. Yeah, yeah. he said um, I'm being that, sarcastic. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. That uh, that honestly, <laughs> maybe you may start seeing him do that, right? I don't know uh, his success this year so far in the two strike approach, but like that is another way to be able to see balls deeper and longer and not be able, not have to try to do too much with it. And you know, sometimes that gets you. I mean, I've seen Miguel Cabrera yeah. do it. I think yeah. he might, I, 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 say, I think he may give himself one strike and then maybe progress to, all right, if it's still not there, let me go two strikes from that one strike spot. I think he yeah. still – there still kind of has to be some fear, some figuring out and some feeling of it, so maybe he doesn't go to it at the beginning of the at-bat. But maybe he does. I think maybe you, you might see him go one strike before yeah. he goes two. Was he have two or three home runs? Two. Two. But, and that's where I think uh, he's under – have double digits soon. I think he's under a lot of people that saw that he was coming back, and you're like, okay. well, he had to come back. I don't think. Well, people... I know, but then he's clearly the he was going to be. He was pencil on the best hitter on your team. Yeah, he hit 25 home runs, and then what, 24 last year. I don't. I don't think people understand this too. Like, he's never been in this spot in the lineup. I just want you to. I want you to think about anything when it comes to baseball in a sense of like, if I went in the cage and the guy flipping to me was horseshit at flipping and balls were all over the place, how many balls do you end up squaring up in those situations? You end up missing a lot of barrels, right? Yeah, if man. you get in the, if you get off of the machine and the machine spraying balls all over the place, I'm getting out of there. It's hard to, it's hard to square balls up. So when I flare, when I turn this to the game, and I know this is the one guy, and we don't want to keep giving him pitches because we we're we're gonna pitch to everyone besides him. You don't really get in that groove because you don't see a lot of action pitches, right. and it becomes hard to find that swing and find that spot because you're not getting challenged and you're not seeing. You're not seeing pitches in those tunnels and in those zones a lot. So I think that does that that's weighing a lot on what he's doing right now and to still be hitting over 300 and still have an on-base percentage of over 400 in a sense like that tells me a lot about him as a player. I think you will really start to see him get going when people start fearing the guys around him. That's that's just me. That's that's how I think it is. I agree. I agree. Is that it? That no, one more. <laughs> Hold on. One more from Fonzo. So I'm thinking is another good question a little bit here. different lighting. We need some more up lighting, more like panels, like he said. I'm looking at this as we go. I think that would be a good for the thing. I'm, we're going to we're, we're talking about this out loud. I look, I look oh, like yeah. summertime me, so yeah, I think we need a little yeah. more lighting. <laughs> yeah, uh, Joe was struggling with the color correction, and I was like, "Well, he's, it looks a little different than Mikey. Let me let me work on this. I've been doing this for a minute. <laughs> it's like, I, can't, I don't understand why I can't get him to match. Oh well, well, they're not going to match. Well, you should probably not. Look, don't, don't look impossible for the match. to make that happen. Don't look for the match. It's not the one to go I for. I mean, that's not going to work. I don't think. Uh, but uh, what word from Fonzo? I thought it was a good question because this is kind of where LSU is, and I think they have more offense in the tank. You just haven't seen it consistently. But ask him, do y'all care if the team is hitting two nine to three hundred, which would be fantastic. If, if LSU is winning games because of pitching and timely hits. That's kind of how the team's constructed. Do not care about that. Like, I would be ecstatic. Arkansas has done that 
a long a lot of times over the next last five six years they have been top of the country and they have been hey we are going to i think it was two years ago maybe it was even last year i don't know but they were saying hey we're going to go and pitch and we're going to get you out and we're not going to give up runs we're going to play great defense and we're going to hit 285 as a team and we're going to drive guys in when we need to we're going to have a couple guys hit some homers and we're going to go that way and that's well here's the thing coming into this game do y'all know what the pitching staff the era was as a staff I know, it was a little higher than we think, I think, isn't it? It's not as high as you think. Oh, maybe, maybe it's going, maybe it's going down after the last Maybe not nearly leader. as high as you think. Uh, four. No. Two, five. Two, nine, eight. As a staff. Yeah. So wow. if I got a team that's hitting 290 to 300, but we ain't even giving up three runs a game, three, maybe. Yeah. Do we have our team average? It's at 306. But going into this game. So. We're okay with that? So, yeah, like, I, 290 to 300 in college usually doesn't get it done because – you're probably usually giving up. Your team ERA is probably sitting around a four and a half somewhere. Two nine eight going into the game. Yeah. That's ridiculous. And honestly, if you have a team average at the end of the year over three hundred, you'd be yeah, over three hundred. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And not now. I understand it because you haven't gotten into conference play yet. But you also don't usually see that sitting at right. two nine eight. That's right. crazy. Or you could be Roman Trapini with a forty point five ERA. Oh okay, it's, I mean, yeah, <laughs> bad just, outing. It's probably one really bad outing. Two thirds. Two thirds. Yeah, yeah, Two walks. Walk. Don't do that to my man, <laughs> oh, dude. Nice little form. Is that a form tag? Little stars. Something I think like it that. One for every earned run. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Come on, man. Don't don't trash the guy like that. He's working hard, he's man. A freshman. He's first time he's been outside. That's true. You know, if all flies out here. Yeah, flies. Milazzo's in three eighty one. Did you know that? Is he hitting 381? I thought he was. So his own base percentage is over 400. Then. Malazzo? Mm hmm. Yeah. I know he was flirting with 400. And that's. Well, weird. he's still flirting with 400, 381. Yeah. And you saw. I mean, one hit probably gets him back there. And you saw LSU yesterday literally play all three of their catchers where you had Malazzo behind the plate, Travinsky at DH, and they put Neil and Wright. They're doing it again. All three of them are playing today. Yeah. Wow. Didn't see that one coming. Me either. <laughs> <laughs> but you have to keep I didn't Brady even know, in the lineup. I didn't know Brady had an outfield. Like, it might not be his. It might <laughs> it be probably is not his. Else. Listen, I have. I mean, sometimes you just got to take what you can get. That's baseball right there. Hey, hey, he's swinging it. So, uh, hey, go see if you can fit that glove. And Jay, give me you a ever play right field? <laughs> but I think that's something you might continue to see moving forward. If Milazzo's going to continue to hit at a 380 clip, obviously, Travinsky, you're not going to see him leave the DH role unless it's the catch maybe one day. But I think that is a way for LSU because that was probably your most inconsistent part of your outfield, whether it was like Pearson, Jake Brown, Mac Begum, however they wanted to do it. But it always came at the expense of taking Neil out the lineup. And now with, I think this move shows he's probably closer to 100% than he's ever been because he doesn't, Jay said that he needed, he wanted to give him days off to make sure he was totally healthy. But that gives you another bat in the lineup, and he is absolutely seeing the baseball right now. Yeah, no doubt. He's swinging it. He has a great – I love his approach. I love the yeah. way he swings it, so. Yep. That's good. I did not expect that to have all three catchers. I guess when you have five catchers, technically you can catch. You can do that. <laughs> you know what's crazy is, like, we're seeing this – Ethan Fry hadn't even got behind the dish. Yeah, he hadn't even got behind it. We're seeing this in real games. Can you imagine what some of the, some of the shit they were probably doing in, uh, in these inner squads and during, <laughs> during fall practices? <laughs> With guys playing in different spots? Because we're seeing this in games. You know they were doing more practice. No doubt. You know they were trying out guys out all over the place in practice. No doubt. I yeah, mean, he said he had put he had put Neil uh, in the outfield for some scrimmages and stuff just to see if he could do it. He's like, I mean, yeah, he could, he could catch and yeah. throw and run. Yeah, it's fine. You figure it out. Like, the outfield's not easy. All he said is just stick him in the outfield. Let's do it. It's not that easy. No, it's not. I mean, you have to, like, balls come off differently. You have to see it. You have to be able to read it and understand angles and all that kind of stuff. Wind. When like under, under everything, but I think it's easier to be taught than moving from the outfield to the infield. Well, and you saw that with Pearson. You know what I mean? Where he was fine at second base, but then you insert Milo, and they, I think they turned two double plays yesterday between Milo, like Milo and Roswell. Like that is something that you just you don't think about until you see it. Where how much of an advantage it is to have somebody at second base who's an absolute stud. He made two great defensive plays yesterday. Had nothing to show for it, Jerry. Jared Jones just muffed one, and then he just couldn't get the throw off. But the way he's playing at second base. That bugged Lloyd. He texted me. He said, did you see that? No, that wasn't you. That was, my, that was Andrew, my brother-in-law. Yeah, that wasn't me. That wasn't you. My bad. But it, as, as a former second baseman, that would bother me. It happens. Yeah. It happens. It happens. Nothing happened. No harm, no, <laughs> no harm, no foul. No harm, no foul. But, yes, 
I mean, you have, like, if you look at this lineup right here, you have Bingham went from left to center. <laughs> Neal's catching. Malazzo's catching. <laughs> Travinsky's catching. So, obviously, they're not all catching. You know, so they're all in different spots. That would be a hell of a strategy. That would be a hell of a strategy. <laughs> Could you do that? Uh, no. Uh, yeah, no. Travin- well, Travinsky's DH. So, you got two catchers on here, Malazzo and uh, Neal. Unless Malazzo came in for Neal. He did, because Brady Neal started the happened. game at catcher today. So, Malazzo, huh? Neal yeah, so started. Malazzo came in for Neal. So, they... They all played today at the same time. Yesterday, they played at the same time. And they all three got on base at the same time. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, and you got Riddell came off the bench. And you got, I mean, you just got all, you have Brown went from right field to first base, right? <laughs> so you have all these options of being able to put guys in and out. Pearson uh, went from second base to right field. You know what I mean? So you have the ability to do what now what baseball is looking for. Right? I wish I was able to play more positions. I'd probably still be playing. You know, hey, I could play third. I could play first. I could play right, to, center, right. You're trying left. to turn it into like uh, modern day basketball where it's like positionless. No, positionless yeah. You just got to be able to score. Yeah. Got to be able to hit. And they've always liked that, right? Hey, draft, draft uh, shortstops, draft center fielders. You can develop them into something else. Or draft. But usually uh, it's developed into something else, meaning right. like we actually put yeah, you there right, and play. Right. Not, like, hey, draft shortstops. You can put a shortstop anywhere on the field. They're yeah. athletic. You can figure out, teach them how to play the outfield. Yeah, to an extent, right? Yeah. Some of them better than others. Uh, but, yeah, I think that it's we're like going to be fine. It's accelerated fun. now. It's like, no, uh, no doubt. Hey, you played shortstop or you played this your entire minor league and or college and or professional career. I think we need you at this spot, though, right now. Like, that's they really accelerated that these days. No doubt. No doubt. Um, it is final at the box. LSU won 7 nothing, So it keeps that sub. Uh, sub, sub less one. than a run. Yeah, less than a run. ERA. On the on the board. If there's any more questions as we continue to go, let's do it. Um, Hold on, real quick. I want to get to the pitching that they because I think there's a at least in my mind there are some questions as how is they're going to manage the bullpen with SEC play coming up. And when you look at the amount of arms that they have, even on a game like today, where how many times have they done a Tuesday Wednesday? Is that this is the first time this year? Yeah, like it used, it used to, to be a thing. It used to be all the time. Yeah, it used to be a thing. It's not. But to get to, I think they added one more weekend, right? <clears throat> I think so to take I, out of the uh, the midweeks. Yeah, yeah, I think. So. I think. I think it was I, killing a lot of teams because they just didn't have the pitching to last yeah. through five games through a, through a week. Yeah. I'm waiting, yes. I'm waiting for the live stats to pull up. Here we go. LSU through. Are you looking for the Griffin tonight? Herring, Christian yep. Little, brought Nick Bronzini, Will Helmers, Cam Johnson, and Aiden Moffitt. Two and a third is the longest somebody went, right? The nobody threw forty pitches today. All of these guys are going to be ready for the weekend again. Yep, yep. Nobody threw forty pitches, and let's not for let's not down uh, downplay Will Helmers. Will Helmers is like, he's come out here starting the season off the run pretty well. I mean, he's got no runs given up, and every time he goes up there, it feels like he strikes out one or two guys. Mm-hmm. You know, two innings pitch today, two strikeouts. No hits, no walks, no runs, no hit batters. Like, and he's up to like six or seven innings pitch where there's only, I don't know, four guys on the team who's thrown more than ten innings. So that's probably all you starters. So it's it ain't like he's only throwing twice and yeah. he's got two innings on the year. Yeah, you know, through two innings today. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you don't, if you don't remember, um, his freshman year, he uh, started the season as the opening day third baseman. <laughs> Helmers? Yeah. Yeah, that's a fun fact. His freshman year opening day third baseman didn't play at third at all in the fall. Didn't play at – he was a pitcher. But he was hitting. He was, came in as a two, two-way oh, yeah. guy. And then he looked good, you know, and coach tried to give a shot. It didn't work, but he gave a shot opening day. Now he's on the ball, if you remember. It's worked before, you know. Bain went from pitching to leading the league in doubles. Step in the bucket, hitting balls at right center. I don't know how he did it, but he <laughs> it did was, it. it. It was something, but he did it. Um, hey, on football news, DeCorey Moore not real committed to LSU? Yeah, I didn't like that. Oh, also, yeah, and Javon Coleman showed up yesterday, too. Uh, he looked good. He came in and threw a – He looked good. We have got to fix your wall. That's like, the next like project. It. The guitars on the wall will be a good touch. We're going to get more lighting for you. Right, and then I need you to do. I need you to decorate. It's your spot. You decorate. I'm it. a minimalist. You got no. You gotta like start. Let's Owning start it. doing some things. Okay. 
That's what you have to. You have to promise you're gonna do that. All right. You can have right on the wall. No, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a shelf on there for you. We're gonna have the guitars hanging, shelf on top. You do whatever you need to do. I have to go to the storage room. See what I have in there. Yeah. I'm signed Harold yeah. Perkins. Whatever you want, dude. Maybe we'll do that. That's what I need you to do. I need you to like make it yours. Finally, you can make something yours. You don't have to move anywhere. That's right. This is home. This is home. Um, but yeah, Decorey and Moore. Um, you knew that was going to happen, right? Like you knew that that good of a recruiting class, people were going to start getting trying to get poached with money. Which well, and well, Nick Saban hated that. I saw. Which brings my I I actually enjoyed that conversation with Nick that they had the round table. Look like he belonged in the in a Senate. But floor. like he had a lot of support from his former players that are in the NFL. Well, yeah, because they had to go through all the shit with Nick Saban. But that I don't even think that's why they they're supporting it. They're supporting because they see where they are now, mm-hmm. and they're seeing what mm, they've learned and what developed. Like he's not saying that people should not get paid. Like he's not saying that they shouldn't be able to build their brand. That's actually he's saying the opposite. I think they should be able to build their brand. But there's a way to do it, and not being able to, to develop these kids and develop them as men and let them grow like you're doing them a disservice for the future. And I agree with that. We've talked about that a lot. I'm for NIL. I'm against the way it's structured right now. I'm against the way it is. Hey, we're just going to pay to play these guys and they're going to have to come in here and we're not going to teach them anything and we're not going to really grow their brand. We're just going to give them money to play. And like, no, no, let's, Let's grow that so that whenever they leave, they have an opportunity to capitalize on that even more. That's what I think. And I think that's why um, I think that's why it was so important for him to go and speak. I, there, think- I mean, you gotta, there's still so many – coaching is still teaching, right? And like, there's still so many even in good the pros. teachers. Even that, in the that, pros. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you literally – we just saw um, Chip Kelly just said, hey, I didn't really I – I didn't sign up to be a CEO. I signed up to be a head coach. And it's no longer being a head coach at that position. You're a CEO, and I want to coach ball. And that's why he literally basically said why he took the job at Ohio State. Um, But, yeah, I mean, like, those coaches are still teachers, and they want to teach. But you're not allowed to teach because the way the system is set up now, there's there's nothing to be held accountable to. If the system doesn't work for me, I'm going to bounce. If the system isn't paying me what I wanted to pay me, I'm going to bounce. And that's kind of how this thing's set up now, and that's – it's taking away from what those guys, a lot of those guys have gotten in the job to do and what they actually enjoy doing. It's kind of taken away from that. I agree. I mean, I think people are like, well, coaches make all this money and they're doing all this. And they're doing, I understand. They should. They're recruiting. They're managing a whole team. They're doing other things than just playing on the field, which I understand playing on the field make, gives them wins. But they're also developing these guys – and so it is their job to do that. They have a lot of a lot more responsibilities. And yes, they are getting paid to do it. You are still going to get paid to do your job and play well and build your brand. It's just the way they're paying these guys now and how they're to have it structured is just not. I just don't think it does the player any advantage. Any any uh, it doesn't help them out at all for the future. That's what I think. Well, I think a lot of it was made. If you wanted to spend it in another direction, it was. Him talking about he also threw, what's his wife's name? Um, Miss Kathy, Miss Terry, Miss Terry, Terry yeah. threw her straight under the bus. Said, "This is what my wife told me. Why are we having these kids over for dinner when all they're asking about is money?" I don't think it's under the bus. I think it's oh, right on line, in line with what he was saying too. Yeah, but I'm just, I'm just thinking it's just like here. This is my wife no, even notices this, right? But I think a lot of the flack that Saban is catching, and whether it be <laughs> he's catching flack for that. Oh, well, yeah, because a lot of people are, especially for where he was coaching, saying, Alabama, you are already paying players. Like, I don't think it's the biggest stretch to say that's, that. But it's a different, yeah. it's different. Right, that's, yeah, I agree. But that's where he was catching some shit was because he's like, oh, now that everybody else can pay players, Alabama doesn't have the same leg up in the competition. And now Saban's out here bitching because I don't have the full control and autonomy that I used to have over college football. Right, and I disagree with that. But it's, right? it is true, though. It's true in a sense of the, the playing field is leveled. No doubt. That's not why he left. He left because now, even though, listen to me, you can have the exact same amount of talent as him. If he's able to keep those guys on the field and coach them 
and develop them, I will pick him 100 times out of 100 times. Yeah, I think LSU fans would have no problem with that sentiment. Right? And so my whole, his whole thing is, I don't care about all these other guys getting a bunch of talent. I believe that I can develop my talent better than they can. But whenever the, ta- whenever the talent that's coming into our university and our school and our team is worried about how much money are you going to pay me, am I going to start, what guarantees are you giving me, by going up to somebody and asking what guarantee do I have to play, hey, bro, yeah, zero guarantees. If you're not good enough, you're not going to play. If this guy's better than you, he's going to play. If you're not doing the shit you need to do, you're not going to play. And that's his, I think that's his point. That's like, your guarantee. Right. Like your guarantee is I'm going to, your guarantee is you're going to have an opportunity to play. That's your guarantee. Like I can't guarantee, nothing's guaranteed to you. You're not learning anything yeah. by saying that. And so I think that was his point. It's not about, oh, the talent is less or everybody else getting all this other talent. No. And I also think there's something to this too. Like we, we sit here and we say, Nick, you've been paying players forever. The playing field's equal, blah, blah, blah. Is it though? Because when we watch Texas A&M, who went 8-4 and four and has never won shit before ever, have the best recruiting class and signing class ever, are we sitting here saying that that playing field is equal? That's not an equal playing field. You watched him sit there and say, basically say, cry out to his own alumnus and his own support staff, like, we are not paying enough. Right. We're not competing in this thing. Well, and I, I, think, I think a big thing that, like, gives credit to what it gives merit to what he was saying is what happened when he left? When he retired, what happened? All these guys left, right? Of course, you're not going to play. You, you, want, you don't want to stay. It's not Alabama without Nick Saban. Yeah. But they left because a lot of those guys were there because they wanted to play for him yeah. and for Alabama and get developed from, by him without have, with maybe taking less money right. from somebody else, right? And so he started to see, hey, this is not going in the direction that I really wanted to go. And it's not like he was 50. He's 70-something years old. Like, he has done what he needed to do and he can retire but to his point it's like how do you expect me to do the job that i want to do at least that i believe in if these guys if i don't know if i'm gonna be able to keep these guys because they're asking for this and they're asking for that and they're asking for guarantees you gotta earn that shit and i i gotta imagine too in those exit conversations it's probably something that he's not (laughs) so we got you here right and like you talked about all the guys that left and that's true like these guys left probably a good bit of it was they wanted to get developed by nick saban but I would imagine there's probably a good number of them, too, that said, hey, I put up these stats, these, this, and that. And when he walked into the exit meeting, they're pointing at this saying, well, how much more are you going to give him? And he's like, yo, wait up. Hold on. You didn't do everything we wanted you to do. We lost these games, and you could have done better. And the first thing you're telling me right. is how much more are you going to get? Right. Out for a raise. Ass backwards. Is That's that? ass backwards. Right. Instead, let's walk in there and say, hey, what do I need to do Right. You're to asking get better. for a bigger paycheck before you're like, whoa. Yeah, yeah. No, no, hey, no, no. Hey, you know no, what? No. How about this? Why don't you get your agent to go talk to somebody else outside and get you a – and if you were that good and you played that well, let's go get a deal from somebody else that is going to pay you because of what you did on the field. Well, Instead think- of going to the school and saying, hey, how much are you going to pay me to keep me here? I think that's right. the bullshit part. I think the NIL side of it is, hey, you play well. You have the ability to go out there and build whatever brand you want. It shouldn't just be easy get you paid this way, that way. Hey, you've done it. You have the ability to go out there and, and market yourself. Go out and do that. Hire someone to go do that. Let your agent go do that. You can have agents now. I think that's the disconnect. Well, I think uh, the other side of it is, well, you're saying, like, go out and find a deal. I think a lot of these schools that they aren't currently attending are offering them deals. You have the old misses and Floridas and Tennessees that are like, hey, if you leave Alabama, we got money for you right now. Yeah, but, but, they're, but they're not offering a deal. They're not offering a deal off of the the production that he had. They're offering a deal to get you away from no where you are. Exactly. That's and that's that, that's, so and that's opposite, opposite, opposite what it is. Yeah, exactly. yeah. No, I'm saying that's what Nick Saban is facing. Like, he's not. They're not going actively and saying, oh, I want more money. It's like this is what I'm getting offered from another school. Like, think about it. Think about it in the NFL stand. Like, when when it, when, it, when a guy comes up to free agency. Like, because you're no longer uh, contracted where you are. You don't get offered money just to get you out of somewhere. You get offered money on what your production is. Right. Like, that's that's what your market is. Right. is your market's not like, ooh, we need a safety. We could get him out of there because we don't want right. to have to play them at the end of the year. Let's do it. Let's just offer The them issue more. is every year's free agency yeah. in college football. Every day. Right. And so, like, whenever you have... You know, I guess they're gonna have to say, okay, you're sign when you sign your letter of intent, your NIL deal is is a two year contract, so you have to be here for two years, whatever it is, right? Like, if you're gonna come here and you don't want to transfer or you don't want to, if you want the money, it's a two year deal. You got to be here for two years. You got to do what we say. You got you got to do what you're gonna do. And 
After that, if you don't like it, you can transfer before your junior year. At least it gives them a couple years for them to develop them and like get in the same spot. It's just maybe even you can you can re-sign after year one too. So that way, hey, if you if y'all come to an agreement that you, so that way you don't get to year two. Yeah. And just say, oh, I'm out. Maybe they can come to you again and say, hey, we'll up this one because we believe in what you're doing and where you're going. Right. We'll keep you here. Right. That way you don't get to year two. And you have a way better year, and you just say, huh, I'm out, free agent. Right. And, they, and, they, and that team doesn't have a chance to keep you, if that makes any sense. And that's why, that's why Dion got so much pub early on, right? I know they weren't as good as they, people want them to be. They're way better than they were the year before. But Dion is so in the public eye and so promoting his guys, his team, himself, that he's bringing all this attention to Colorado, right? So Colorado's not paying all these guys NIL with a whole bunch of – Booster money, yeah, maybe a little bit, but he's getting deals outside of the school, right? He's getting national deals. He's getting these things for these players. To, and other schools, USC did it. Four of them are national companies. Yeah. Now, it's, that's because he's in L.A., obviously. He's going to be the number one, potentially number one overall pick in the draft. And so that helps, but that's where the value – I mean, that's why he made $12 million, whatever he made, right? Like, the school's not paying him $12 million. He's making $12 million on the value of his name, which is how NIL was intended. I'm okay with that. Now, if you're paying a guy $12 million or $3, $4 million to come to your school, that's different to me. If, you're pay- if the guy's making the money based off of what he did, I- I'm okay with that. You have no say in that? You don't like that? No, I forgot what I was going to say. Mm-hmm. But that's, I mean, that's where I'm at. I, had no, I also do think, too, like. No qualms with. Call me crazy. Said. But I do think a lot of the reason why the, the top end of the numbers are what they are is because of how guys are getting paid to come in if, that haven't done anything. So if I, if I give somebody 500 grand to come in and hasn't done anything and say he's at this school and say the next guy across the country is at a quote unquote better school and he's already done more, well, he can't be getting 500 grand. Yeah. He's going to ask for more. Coach. So then the top end becomes crazy because what's being given to guys that haven't done anything coming in is where it's at. It's diluted and it comes off as entitled sometimes. When these guys think they're earned, uh, they're owed more money. The kid from Maryland, third string running back, asked for two hundred grand. You're the third string running back, bro. You haven't played. What are you gonna go? Who are you gonna go get two? It's not just like the money is just not giving money out just to have you. You have to have some sort of performance or be wanted to get right. LSU got a basketball transfer last year. Great, big transfer. Needed him. Had to have him. Had to have him. You think he came to LSU for free? No. They paid him. He didn't play at all. Like, that's my issue. You're paying. We now they have to do it because they have to stay competitive with whatever. But like, you're paying guys to come here and you have no idea how they're going to perform. Pay them after they perform. That's my issue. And I think a lot of it coming from the other side of this is players that get put in a position to quote unquote perform, and then whatever it shows up on the field that they aren't, and then you get less and less playing time and now you're not able to fulfill your nil obligations and they don't get paid based off of their performance you do that, get paid because the nil obligations are not based off of performance you can't be like paid for after play. you're getting yeah. paid for it yeah. you're getting approached because your performance right. once you sign the deal it's not hey you score 17 touchdowns this year we're going to give you more money yeah like they're not getting paid they already signed that deal because of what they've done that's on the for, field that's pay for play lloyd right so like but if they if they sign this deal based off of their performance in the past, and they have a bad year, yeah, maybe the next year they may not get it, but they're not going to take it away from them from not playing that year. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I just know that some of these conversations, that have, whether it's pay for play or not, there's no real regulation on it. Nobody's getting in trouble for it. It's, I've heard that some players are, they feel like if they get less and less opportunity, they would have fewer and fewer opportunities to make money. And no so, shit! Right, I know, but that's what I'm saying. That's why they're saying... But that's everything in life, dude. Yeah, I know, I'm not sticking up for it. I'm I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm not, I'm not yelling at you. I'm just like, that is real life. If you want to be treated like an adult and you want to make money, you want to be treated as like a professional, this is how it is. Some people are going to get to the NFL and some people are going to make millions and millions and millions of dollars. Some people are going to get to the NFL and fight to make a roster. And they're going to play for two years and they're going to be doing something else. They're going to be selling commercial insurance like me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that is the reality of the world. To tell these kids, hey, you're not playing well, so we're not going to play you anymore, so you may not make as much money. Yeah, duh. That's what happens. <laughs> Sorry about it. That is what happens. If you don't, the saying in, in the baseball clubhouse, in the minor leagues, what was it? 
If you're in the minor leagues and you're miserable and it's August and you're you tired, like it? if you don't like it, play better. If you don't like where you're at, play better. Make a difference. Do something different. Why aren't you playing better? Well, let me understand the playbook better. Let me get better. I mean, and maybe, just maybe, you are not, this guy may be better than you, and that's okay. But if you're good enough, you're going to get in there. <laughs> and if you have a good brand, you have a good personality, and you have something, you can monetize that. You may not make the top end money, but not everybody makes that. That is the reality of the world. And that's what bugs me. Make your money. I am all for that. But when it's only about that and you don't want you don't have any loyalty to anything and you're not worried about the big picture, which is getting better and trying to get to the next level, that's where I have an issue. Yeah, that's where <coughs> it, the wheel continues to spin because okay, I didn't play well at this school. There's other schools out there like I'll get you for two hundred K, then of you course. go and you don't back play to, well there. Yeah, but then you go still get your money. So that's what that's where I would imagine the disconnect is when you have guys that haven't played it down saying, "Hey, I'm getting offers from X, Y, and Z." No, I, and, hey, I under- like, I, and I understand. Go I, exactly, and I understand their side of it too. Yeah, but I'm just telling I'm you just that, saying, like, that's how broken it is right that, now. But that's why I have no problem with what Nick said right. because they have got to fix it. A little passionate about that that topic. Yeah, people. <laughs> People don't like what I'm saying. No, no. People were just uh, interested about Nick Saban, and, and now they're like, oh, this is what he's going to do on college game day. I don't think he's going to be a curmudgeon. No, he's not going to do that on game day. This yeah. was He was brought by Ted Cruz in the Congress to literally have a roundtable discussion about this. Yeah. Like, he's not going to just, like— Ted Cruz? And, and make no mistake it about Ted it. Cruz? It is. Yeah. I make just no, figured he would be out the country. Make no mistake about it. They Big bring issues, they usually leave. If they bring this up on college game day, I guarantee you— Whatever he ends up saying, the rest of that panel will be saying the exact same thing. No doubt. And it's not because they want to just fall in line with Nick. They just also have somebody else who's not – who people respect and people see it and kind of finally can see it from a different side. They know. They don't have to be the first to bring it out anymore. Hey, get your money. You know, like, I'm good with that. Fine I have with no you. problem with you getting your money. But there's got to be – the way it's set up right now is not the way. And I appreciate what Nick said. That's where I'm at on that. Yeah, we'll see. I don't know how that. I don't know how we got to that, but we got to it. <laughs> well, because there there was a huge article that came out before he even like stepped foot with Congress or whatever he was doing, that he sat down with Chris Lowe and kind of explained the way he thought of it. Right, that's why Ted saw Cruz that. Brought him on, and it's like he clearly feels strongly about this because he said, "He's like, if it wasn't the way that it was, like I probably wouldn't be retired because I had. First of all, I don't like the way that this." new era of college football i don't like the way the athletes res- like they don't respect the sport like i didn't like our the way that our team reacted after losing like everybody was throwing helmets like i can't they don't listen to me the way that they used to and that's where i think the other side of it came from where it's like oh nick saban this is why he failed in the nfl because he doesn't know how to manage personalities different responsibilities different lives you have guys who are 36 years old like jason kelsey who have families and they're grown-ass men and they have life they have to manage that that's a whole different conversation than 18 to 22 year olds where they're in young part of their life. They have the rest of their life to, to do different things and grow and do all this stuff. So like there's a different way of managing that. I'm with you. I understand he didn't like the NFL because he didn't like that. He didn't have to be able to, he didn't have the ability to control and basically guide and develop these guys. Right. Because they've kind of got in there and did their thing that you may have a couple guys that, you know, buy in, but it's a lot harder to make the NFL teams buy in than college teams. That's why you have college coaches, and NFL coaches. They don't all work together. Now in college, when this starts to happen, these guys are really young, right? Doing this. And so it's even makes it even harder for them to understand because they don't have the experience of real life or anything. Cause like think about it, dude. Think about the personalities of some of these athletes that you've seen when they first got to NFL and then when they left the NFL, right? Like when they're 22, they're acting way different. Tom Brady, you go look at Tom Brady's, uh, the, the series on, on Tom Brady. When he was 22 to 26, he was talking about how he was going out, he was partying, he was going out there and winning because he was able to do it. And then he got to a certain point, and Richard Seymour, and uh, who was the linebacker? Teddy OJ Wagner. Mayo. Who? Wagner. No, 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 for the Patriots. Back in the day. OJ Mayo, whoever it was, right? Um, talks to him and pulls him aside and is like, listen, this ain't, if you're going to be the guy, this is not, and this is an older guy, right? And so at 26, 27, he changes it, goes into this whole thing, 
makes him is one of the, the best quarterback of all time and does this whole thing. And my whole point in saying that, not you're not all going to be Tom Brady. But by going through the steps of life, you understand, you see things differently. And so that's how it makes it a little bit more difficult to, you know, influence NFL teams. In, in college, you're in that young age where it's like, I'm invincible, I don't, it doesn't matter. And that makes it even harder when you don't have parameters to be able to say, okay, these guys can go wherever they want. They don't really have any regulations and you don't guide them into what they need to be guided to, right? Like, yeah, they, some of them can make the right decisions and do stuff, but you, as a parent, you're putting your kid, you're giving your kid to a college coach. My mom told Coach Paneri, hey, just make sure like you treat, like you put my son in a good position, not to succeed on the field, but like life, make him grow up. You know what I mean? Like develop him as a man. And that is part of their job. Whether fans want to believe it or not, that is a part of a head coach's job in college is to the good ones is to develop a guy for what happens because not everybody, is going, barely any of them are going to be in the NFL, in the professional baseball, wherever, right? 99% will go pro in something other yeah, than and that's I, and that's true, but it sucks. As, as, but that is true, you know? And so you're, do you develop that on the, uh, in the classroom or do you develop that on the football field with your, in, with your coach? Your coach... Your coaches and, your, and the teammates are with you more than anyone else when you're in college. So you're going to develop more that way, right? You are who you hang out with, that type of stuff. That's, uh, you know, I think that's where his beef is, and I'm okay with that. But you're not going to see that on college game day. I firmly believe that. Yeah, I think you'll get more fun Nick Saban than curmudgeon Nick Saban. Yeah, because you know why? Pat, Pat's there. Yeah, he's not going to let him be curmudgeon. Um, all right. That was a good show. We're getting better. What? It's a good show. Can't believe it's already it's already time for the segments. For the seggies. Um, do we have seggies today? I do. Look at you. I do have segments. How about the rumor of uh the Bengals trying to go get Justin Jefferson? And I don't it's very silent on both fronts to where Not it happening. seems like it might you think? And I don't know how they how they could afford him. But. T. Huggins and two first rounders. That's not. I mean, look. And then they have to sign T. T. Higgins. Higgins, huh? Then you'd have to sign T. Higgins. Yeah, they'd have to go with a. Well, I mean, you're getting rid of a contract, so you have money to get the contract. Um, I'm saying whatever team trades for him is like, I'll just wait until the franchise tag is well, off of him next year. Right, but if you have the ability to sign him now, you yeah, sign him now. But I said, wouldn't it be a sign with a deal in place too? If they that's that's because so, they're yeah, getting rid of Justin to, Jefferson's right. deal. Yeah, didn't he sign a deal? No, no, that's oh, I thought he signed a deal. Oh, okay. They offered him like thirty million a year, and he turned it down before the year. And now no Kirk Cousins, and who did they get? To... Well, they just so their left tackle Jonah Williams just signed somebody else. So the Viking window was shut. Well, I'm so, talking about the Bengals. Left tackle Jonah Williams just signed someone else. So the Bengals. Oh, now they need a left tackle. Don't again. need to be spending first rounders to get a wide receiver, which I would love Justin Jefferson to go play with with Jamar and Joe. That would be awesome. Awesome. I'd like to see Joe healthy, though. Yeah. You know, again. so like that's the biggest thing is the is the offensive line. You fixed it. Now you're getting rid of him. Let's go fix it again. You know, that's what you're gonna have to do. That's the that's the main thing. Um, but okay, mistake of the day is brought to you by our friends at Dozy Place. I would imagine that- next week, though. By the way. Definitely going to Doze as a squad because after this week, I'm going to need – maybe I'll have a midday beer <laughs> in the back bar. I that, need it. I'd say less. I'm going to need it. I love people that do that. How about when I you go to Lafayette and LaFonda's and you go there and you walk to the bar and they're drinking these margaritas. I'm like, how the hell are you expecting to go back to work drinking Not these gotta. things? Not going to. One turns to two, two turns. I guess I'm going home. Hey, they're small now. They're easy to go. They're easy to go down. They'll yeah. put you on your ass too. Give me a twenty ounce. Good. Mistake, Mistake of the, the day. day. This can happen if you have too many margaritas at La Fonda's. If you're all this Chapman, really loves his mom. I don't know if you've seen Whoa, this. What the heck? This is him and his mother hanging out on the couch. Why is he doing that? He posted this on his own story. Man, that's not a real. <laughs> Why is he doing that? That's no, how they show love. Not real. And, yes, it is. Uh-uh. The no, cuter missile. No. no, sir. No, sir. You just can't, you just can't believe it. No, ain't no way. Ain't no way. Hey, every I mean, culture's that's different. That's tough, dude. Every, what is that? Every, every, don't put that on my screen again. What? 
Oh my god! No. Can we move that from there? That is a it's mistake. Disturbing. <laughs> that is a mistake. I'm saying. Wow. Sure. Every culture does things a little differently. Wow. Loved his grandma or mom. <laughs> his wow. family. No more. What do you do if you? I no mean, more. Of, is there a conversation in the locker room? No more. <laughs> well, he's a hard guy to have a conversation with because he's a monster. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Is that like yes. a big? I mean, have you, have you ever seen him? He's a person? very huge, very large. No, no, no. In person, it's it's and, even more. And than when, from when he got to MLB till now, yeah, is I mean, he looks like a tight end. Like he's six six. His arms go down to his ankles, and his ass is at his neck. And <laughs> he's shredded. And he is shredded, dude. Like, what that, are you gonna tell that guy? That's what I'm saying. Like, is this hey, a, bro, whatever you want to do, man, you do what you gotta do. I'm okay with it. Just don't show it to me. Yeah, that's when you look around the locker room. Like, is Chapman in here? Because we got to talk about it. I mean, that's that's a tough look. Tough look. Come on, dog. <laughs> Come on, dog. So that was um, a mistake of the day. That was a good, or it could be a curtain call. No, nope, that was family. a good mistake of the day. Curtain call is brought to you by our friends at Assured Partners. Man? Me. What we got today, boys? I have a curtain call, and just for the the sheer comedy of it, because I hope it happens and I hope it's true. Aaron Rodgers allegedly <laughs> I saw that. on the vice uh, on the, the VP ticket of, or JFK Jr. For I mean, JF- no, RFK, RFK, no, whatever JFK. it is, the whole family, great Robert F. Kennedy. Yeah, they all what a nepotism at its finest. You have a last name Kennedy. You're just in politics. He's doing a great job. Sure, I don't know which one's which. One of them is on steroids. Robert Kennedy is the one running. And then there's another one with a really raspy voice. That's Robert, same guy. Oh, same guy. Okay, well, he listed Aaron Rodgers on the short list. <laughs> and he's not a stare. I mean, he works out. He's like a, you know, whatever, go ahead. Yeah, he was at Muscle Beach with his nipples out. Go ahead. Um, go ahead. But he has Aaron Rodgers Boy, realize his nipple. <laughs> on the short list to possibly be VP. I saw that. Um, Can you imagine? Yes. I want it to happen so badly. I this want him is, to play football. He ain't doing that. I want him to do both. He can't do both. Why? He ain't, he ain't doing both. He's not doing both. What does a VP do? I mean, you tell me he doesn't have one, three hours on Sunday he can get away? Lord, <laughs> stop. He ain't doing both. This but is, this would be more America than anything. Like, you wouldn't even put this in a movie. Hey, you're off the hook right now. <laughs> but that would be unbelievable. The New York Jets starting quarterback is also the vice president of the United States of America. Ain't happening. It's like but, a script from the boys. You know who the other running mate potentially is? It was somebody else crazy. Jesse Ventura. Woo! The wrestler. That's not woo. What that was the other one on the list. <laughs> what a ticket. That's crazy. Get some attention, though. If that happens, that means The Rock will be on the next one. The Rock, should, the Rock <laughs> out of all of them, should be. Like, he'd be the one that'd be like, okay, I'm voting for The Rock. He'll be on the next one. Can you imagine The Rock walking into NATO and putting his, putting his, put sitting down there and like saying Let's something like, hey, bro. Hey, if The Rock was in full uni, too, just cut off. I mean, <laughs> he hits him with off. the eyebrow. Doesn't matter if it, yeah, it's with his off. tequila and everything that he promotes next to him, <laughs> his Under Armour belt, the no bull, everything, whatever the hell it is. Um, President. But I will say this: The Rock, like I'd be, I'd vote for The Rock. Obviously, I don't know his policies or anything he says, but well, that's like a, that's why this. I would imagine that any of those guys, like he would be able to articulate what he wanted to. He'd be able to rally people around him. And listen, I think we've noticed and learned that. Uh, if you have the right people or you have the people around you that can do the things that maybe you're lacking, um, you can get things done and run stuff, run the country. It's not being, has not, well, I'm not getting into that. Anyway, that's a, that's a curtain call. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. That is a curtain call. I mean, imagine him running out the tunnel with the American flag again. <laughs> you think he wants to do that again? You think I mean, like, that you know was what? so f- awesome. It didn't work out. That's so. what I'm saying. What's more, I would do it again if I was him. Oh, yeah, I would. What's more American than that? And if he was the vice president of the United States of America, like, that's America. <laughs> hmm. All right, oh, what you wow. got, Jay? What's your current call? I'm going to give it to uh, Patrick Queen, man. PQ, I, baby. Yeah, like, I, you know, one of the homies has come on. He's done. It's unbelievable where his career got to. In a sense of some, some people talked about it kind of like going downhill, and they didn't, they they didn't really value him that much. And then he goes into last year, has a career year, goes out and makes the Pro Bowl. Was he? All, I mean, might have been All Pro as well. But he turns that into basically as a contract year into the bag. 
right? He goes out and he gets his money, gets his, gets a deal elsewhere, and turns it into what he's what it what is going to be now. And it's pretty impressive when you watch guys go into that career year. I say career year when you watch guys go into that contract year. And it's I don't people I think people outside don't really understand how much it's like play for your for your future in this thing and guys really take to it that way and when you watch guys take to it that way and actually perform it's it's pretty it's cool to see no so doubt we'll give no a, doubt. a little curtain call Patrick Queen same going to the Steelers who is the same team that said Mike Thomas said he doesn't play like a Steeler yeah and mm. then well I mean no he said he didn't play like a Raven he said he, he said he wasn't a Raven oh that's what it was he didn't yeah, play yeah. like a Raven which could have been a compliment <clears throat> yeah. I think Mike, Mike had him uh, targeted for a while right now, huh? He wanted him. Yep. Wanted him, no doubt. Um, all right, so my curtain call is to your favorite quarterback in the NFL, Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins continually betted on himself, right? He's coming off ACL surgery at 35. Achilles. I mean Achilles, not ACL. Achilles. ACL is probably better, honestly. Yeah, this is a tough yeah. one. Yeah, so he comes off Achilles. At 35 years old, just signs a free agent deal with the uh, Falcons, which we had, we talked about on Monday, and signs a hundred and has a hundred million dollars guaranteed. One hundred and fifty overall. Yeah, over four million, years. Over four years, a hundred million guaranteed. He's already signed. Uh, he's already made two hundred and fifty million guaranteed in his career. Um, so my curtain call is to him and his agent. They've yes. done a really good job of setting himself up for a lot of money. My other part of the curtain call is to him and his response to Kyle Pitts or their interaction. So Kyle Pitts wears number eight. He wears number eight. Kirk Cousins wears number eight. Kyle Pitts was like, made a tweet, who's going to get number eight? You know, like, who's, damn, I got, it means I got to give up number eight, whatever. So they asked him about, they asked Kirk Cousins about what that conversation was like at his press conference. And Kirk Cousins said, yeah, I talked to him. I said that he didn't have to give up number eight. But that he'd be willing to, op- I'd be willing to open up my checkbook to get it from him. And Kyle Pitts, Pitts responded, says, "No, nah, you're good. Have number eight. All I want is targets." Kirk Cousins is like, "Great answer." And I think, I honestly, I think Kyle Pitts is going to benefit a lot from Kirk while he's there. I mean, look at what Kirk did with the tight ends in Minnesota. You know, I think they're be good. That, I think, but I think that was a great response from both of them. And Curtin called his his agent for being able to get him four hundred million dollars guaranteed, maybe at the end of his career, two three fifty, no doubt. Yeah, and I think he's the second high. He's grossed the second amount of money in the NFL of active players. He's only behind Aaron Rodgers, and Rodgers has like six years on him in the league. I mean, Washington did all of this. It's their fault. That yeah. He's oh, able. franchise. No, well, yeah. Snyder. Just Double keep, tag. Just just keep making it. Didn't know his name. Caught him the wrong Kurt. Kirk. Kurt. Kurt. It's incredible. It's incredible. He's 1-11 and 11 in his playoff career, too. Two. Oh, no. 1-11. And 11. And and they beat, do you know who he beat? Saints. Yeah. You know how he beat him? Throw it to a tight end. Yep. Yeah, the push-off. Yep. But it wasn't really that man. That, that's the least of the controversial playoff mm. losses. Mm. Well, yeah. It's two of have been by two of Minnesota. Minnesota. Mm-hmm. But that's where you get back into the conversation of you thought that the Saints made the move because in the weak NFC South, if you go get a player such as Derek David Derek Carr, that you could win the division. So now, now Derek Carr is, what, the third best quarterback in the league maybe in the, in the conference? Absolutely. I mean, the way Baker played that's last year. right now, if you go off a, what you saw last year. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, definitely yeah, Kirk easy to say. won. Yeah. Right? And then I guess you can battle him and Baker. But based out of last year, what, they, what the Bucks did – Baker won a playoff game. Yeah. Baker. And then Kirk. Definitely the three right and you now. Better hope, you better hope that the uh, Canellis at in Carolina doesn't develop. Doesn't do what he just did with Baker. But doesn't just around. do. And who was with before Baker? Gino. So, with Gino. Yeah, with Gino too. You're right. Yep. So you better hope that don't happen because if not, you got the fourth best quarterback. <laughs> the most expensive one. Yeah. Well, second. So, second. yeah. But for what you're getting, it wouldn't turn out to be the same. Actually, maybe third. How much did Baker I mean, Baker's got 50 guaranteed. Got 100 mil. Yeah. Three years, 100 mil, 50 guaranteed. So it's second. Wow. Contract is right. Oh, so, and, but shout out to the Saints. Got younger. Willie Gay. They did get Willie Gay today. Okay, yeah. that's a big pickup. It's a huge pickup. <laughs> it's a pickup. I love him. Why Why you not like it? 
No, I do. I don't think it, I'm, I'm not saying it's not like he went out and signed like a. No, it's a big pickup though. Yeah, yeah, they got younger, and I think he's going to play a pivotal role. I love the way he plays. I think he's one of the most athletic linebackers in the NFL. No doubt, that's a big, that's a big get. I mean, I really do think perfect that, I mean, personality. You restructured uh, uh, Demario Davis. Demario Davis, which Demario Davis is not going. He's still playing really good football. Thirty-five. Yeah. And uh, so you have him, and you have Willie Gay. You imagine Willie Gay is going to take over that role whenever DeMario leaves. So That's I like that. Hope. I like that. We'll see what else happens. At least they made a move. Finally, we get him back. Anything. Got off finally the couch. They've been, they've been working on kicking the can down the road. Now they think they finally kicked it all the way enough to where they, they can start making moves. <laughs> How far do we have to go? We've they done figured it. Figured it out. <laughs> yeah. Got Tyron Matthew on a guaranteed deal. Bad. Move the money around on Demario Davis. Move the money around on Carr. Car. They, I think they're below the cap now. They are. No, well, they got. I mean, they have to be. Yeah. <laughs> so. Right. They just signed another one. Got to get there. Yeah. So, all and, right. Good for them. We'll Andy, see what else happens. Just excited to see Tractor Cito, Derrick Henry in the Ravens uniform. Doesn't that feel like the perfect fit I for mean, him? It feels like NFL blitz. Definitely it, does now with the like, the like the style of offense that they're. Yeah. Running. It's more downhill than what they're doing. Tony Pollard, now. Tony Pollard going to Titans. Uh, the Titans kind of reminds so be me him of and like Spears there. Uh, him and Spears going to kind of go back to what they used to do with uh, like Chris Johnson a little bit probably like more athletic running back. They're obviously not as fast as Chris Johnson, but like you know they yeah, always, two of them on the backfield. They're always the running the football really well there, but they ran it differently than they ran it with Derrick Henry. Who's their head coach? Um, they also got a quarterback. Did they not? Will Levis? No. Brian Callahan is the one to see. Caught they the uh, they just season. traded for a quarterback. Who was it? Mason Rudolph. Mason Rudolph. That's not a quarterback. What do you mean? Mason Rudolph had a good end of the year. They got him as a backup. No doubt. Because you drafted three quarterbacks in the last two years. Or no, you drafted two, two. quarterbacks, and you had Tannehill. Tannehill. Tannehill's obviously not there. So now you have two quarterbacks that don't have a lot of experience. I would imagine Levis is probably the guy they want. And then you're going to have Mason Rudolph as the backup. Because yeah. Mason Rudolph played great at the end of the year. So He did. I would imagine that's what they're trying to do. Here's your franchise quarterback, Mason Rudolph, from? Texas Tech. Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State. Damn, why do I keep thinking Texas Tech? <laughs> I mean, why would you do that? I mean, <laughs> why would you do that? It's tough to come back from. What do you mean, dude? He was – didn't know his name. Uh huh. Didn't tough. know Miles Garrett's name either. Tough. Well, we made it through another show. No hiccups. No hiccups. I appreciate that. Appreciate the boys every day. Every show got something different. We're gonna have something different next show. We're gonna make this thing our home. We appreciate you sticking with us. Uh, we appreciate all the support. If you like what you're seeing and you like our show, please like and subscribe to our youtube channel we are gonna have guests next year i just we had next to make year. sure next i mean week. next week yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah next we're gonna have guests I next week i feel like week. that timetable give us some time <laughs> yeah, give us, <laughs> yeah let us give us be patient be patient uh we're gonna have guests next week uh we just wanted to make sure we had this all set up before we had them come in here uh, i think you'll enjoy the guests we'll have a lot of fun obviously um you know having conversations with them if you can't watch us and you like listening to us or anywhere you get your pods we appreciate all the love and support we appreciate all of our sponsors and uh hey we're getting close to tailgate season. Yeah, we had some people in the chat wondering when we were going to do a... Well, there's no games this weekend at home. Right. No, they were just saying if we come down, he was talking about the A&M series. Fun. We'll have tailgates on Saturdays. Wanted to come see. We're going to have tailgates, and we'll announce it when we do. But we're going to start doing it. We got parking pass now. We ain't got to worry about trying to mooch off of people. and you know We're going to have a good time. So we'll uh, we appreciate y'all. Enjoy your Wednesday. Enjoy the LSU game tomorrow at noon. Go to go have a beer at Walk-Ons or go out. No. Walk-Ons. Go have a beer at Doe's. And have a burger. Lunch, burger, and beer. Basketball. Basketball beer. on the TV. This would be a great place to watch the game. The Triple B's. Yeah. Bring it back. Beer, basketball. Burgers. Burgers. Oh. Okay. Brews, burgers, beers. Brews, burgers, basketball. There you go. Basketball. Brews, burgers, ball. Go cool. see him. Go check him out. Tell him we sent you. Uh, we appreciate you. Enjoy your Wednesday. We'll see you on Friday live here from our studio from 1 to 2.30ish. To come up with a name. Peace. We do got to come up with a name, huh? Put that in the tickler. Put it in the chat. Live from... Whatever.
Peace. Uh, names. Names. Throw them in the chat. Image, likeness. Suggestions. Name of the new studio. And don't don't get all baseball themed on us. So you ain't gonna make it like the clubhouse or the, you know, the chat's the clubhouse. Right. This is, so this is not the clubhouse. We don't know, that. Yeah. We don't know what it is yet. We'll figure it out. All right. All right. Peace. See you Friday.